Um, only one announcement is that I will not be around on the 28th, which will be next week, and it doesn't, or two weeks from now, and it doesn't sound like I can make enough players for Quorum for either Friday on either side. So I'm afraid that we will be off until the 12th. Sorry about that. But we'll make do. I'll see what I can do to make it a fun session when I get back. Um, other than that, I believe we have a chief medical officer log. Dr. Galen's personal log, stardate 82446.2. This is to be sent to the Daystrom Institute. Recipients are going to be Helen and Wilhelm Carruthers. Greetings and salutations. I hope this finds you well. I wish to express my thanks for your endeavor to get me posted on the station. I have had quite a fun time so far with most of the crew. While most of the station seems to be accepting of a holograph holographic doctor, some have reservations. But fortunately, most of the command staff have my back. Being stationed out here has led to some interesting discoveries already. A interesting animal-like species um, from possibly a different universe. We've encountered on one of the Borg hubs. It is an interesting spider-type alien. It's able to oscillate an internal organ at such a frequency, it's able to then cross the quantum barrier. Still trying to figure out if we can domesticate it for maybe have a friendly pet. But I do want to find a way to set it home and hopefully to safety. The other interesting bit was a hybrid humanoid insectoid remain. They have been dubbed the Scorpio, I believe. Not much is known about them, but their genetic structure is rather anomalous. Everything about their design and possible traits shows that they should not be able to exist the way they do. It is a vertebrae design with a invertebrate body. It's quite peculiar, but it's presented an interesting challenge to solve. On a more personal note, I managed to clear 8,000 different crew members for their physicals. And the med students I have aboard seem to be responding well to my teachings. I've only had to talk with a couple of them off to the side due to their hostility towards the hologram, but it seems that they've smartened up. Other than that, I'm having fun. And log. Well done. So the first scene of the episode will actually be in the captain's quarters where we will introduce ourselves to our new chief en our soon to be chief engineer. I believe her name is Larce Yamato. Or yeah, sorry, Larce Yamato. Yes, Larce Yamato. So Captain Captain Crawford is in his ready room when there is a chime at the door. Enter. In walks Lieutenant Yamato. So uh, if you could please describe what uh, Yamato looks like. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Larce is a human female. She stands about five foot nine ish. I, well, five foot seven ish, and she's uh, got some. Uh, she's slender, but she has decent curves in appropriate places, and. She has dark brown hair that goes into a ponytail that goes down to about mid-back. And facial feature-wise, uh, people who paid attention to historical notes may note she has a, pa a passing resemblance to uh, Hoshi Sato from the NX-01 days. Hey. Uh, she has a it's sort of a minor ancestry kind of thing but but uh, there there is enough of a there are enough similarities to make at least a passing resemblance uh, out of character I, I basically chose her uh, I, I chose Hoshi's actress for uh, what uh, she would look like fair enough 
And she steps up to the captain and uh, salutes. Uh, Lieutenant Larsen Yamato reporting, sir. Lieutenant Yamato, it's good to see that. Near, uh, out of character, has she been here on the station since the construction, or did she come here, like, via transfer? Um, uh, she, she's she been here, I, she was actually part of the construction, and uh, was I, assigned to stay here once the construction was completed. Okay. Well, I assume your time here before being promoted has gone well? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Looking over your record, you seem uh, hear about possibly you've been working on some kind of new device. Ah, yes. And I'll uh, she'll bring up her left arm, which has some a, a sort of unique gauntlet attached to it, and. She'll move her right hand up to it and holographic displays pop up. I call it an exo tricorder. It's sort of a combination of a tricorder and a pad with some mobile emitter technology. It, I came up with it one day when I, I came up with it uh, during a previous assignment when I needed to keep myself busy. For keeping yourself busy, that's rather impressive. Thank you. Oh, and it also has a rather unique feature. Is she taps a few command and and a blade and uh, a blade materializes on it. it? It can be handy if if, need, if you need a cutting tool or need to surprise someone in a in a fight. It, out of character, it's basically an omni tool from right. Mass Effect. Okay. Oh, uh, did you have any questions for me? I essentially just wanted to call you in here to welcome you as chief engineer and really about it, unless you have questions for me. Um, not, not really, sir, but uh, I guess the main thing is my, my main passion is research and development, sir. I, I like tinkering with technologies advan- and advancing the Federation technologically as much as possible. So, um, would it be possible for me to have a lab? Uh, if you don't have one already, I'm sure one can be arranged. Uh, thank you. And you might want to work with, uh, Master Chief Ember and Dr. Galen, actually. They've both been working on there's themselves that you might be fairly helpful in. I very well. Thank you, sir. Welcome, and welcome to the position of Chief Engineer, Lieutenant. Thank you very much, sir. Unless you have anything else for me, you're dismissed. Thank you. Uh, and this time, instead of saluting, she will bow in the Japanese fashion and then leave. So with her leaving, does anybody have any other scenes they'd like to accomplish before we jump into plot-based stuff? Um, I believe our Master Chief wanted the Captain to come in for some kind of like physical something or other, from what I remember. Oh, sure. I, I mean, basically, I'm going to put you in the ring, and we're going to see how long you last. It's not going to be long, so it'll be fun. Um, <laughs> I'm all for watching the captain getting beat up, so let's go to the security office. I'll be there. <laughs> okay, uh, where Lieutenant Galen is on site, already hearing of what is about to happen. Galen actually shows up as a tall Kelpian. Okay. And did I overhear right that the commander would like to show up as well? Absolutely. Okay. It's, um, even with several uh, rooms separating you from, uh, from her, it's not hard to overhear the uh, sounds of Master Chief Ember shouting, 
what could be classified encouraging words to folks that are currently working out in the gym and the adjacent sparring ring? What could be classified? (laughs) She's probably going full drill sergeant on them. (laughs) That's her. Um, uh, Dura, the uh, security personnel on the front desk, stands at attention as the captain walks in. Um, Dura to Master Chief Ember. Yes, Dura, what is it? Uh, The captain is here in sparring attire and says that he has an appointment. Mm, he does indeed. It's time for his ass to get handed to him. Tell him to report to the sparring ring immediately. This way, sir. Uh, sirs. As she... No, she gives a knowing smile and will lead you into the ring. Or into the wait, the wait room by the waiting room. Ah, good. Captain, Commander, it's good that you're here. That means I can handle the both of you at the same time. That will make my life significantly easier. Really now? You think you can take both of us at the same time? Oh, I don't doubt it. But since you are both here together, we're going to do something a little bit different. And I yell at the people to get out of the ring. And I grab a pair of boxing gloves, two of them, and hand them to each of you. Whichever one of you is able to knock out the other first will get my blessing, and you won't have to come here for regular training. Actually, let me rephrase that out of character. Whoever knocks the other person out doesn't have to report for training, and whoever does get knocked out has to be trained further. (laughs) Master Chief, I am an arms specialist. An arms specialist? uh, I'm a little bit of a... That's a disadvantage to our captain. Sorry, captain. Well, then that's the captain's problem because you all should be trained for the worst out here. If something goes wrong with our ranged weaponry, you need to be able to defend yourself in close quarters. Oh, I have no doubt that I will be able to. Captain uh, should be able to. I just smile. Uh, He'll... Crawford will just slowly put the boxing gloves on and get into the sparring ring. All right. Out of character, I'm glad I'm glad I made it. I'm glad I had the idea to come up with that Omni tool complete with Omni Blade. Okay. (laughs) All right. So Captain In we go. All right. So, this could just, uh, so, let's pull up the various tables needed for melee combat. I'm assuming you guys are not being, not engaging lethal force. I don't think you can be lethal with unarmed and without a talent anyways. I have mean right hook. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm glad the doctor's on site then. This is not quick going to action. go well. Oh no, yep. I'm going down. This is going to be fun. Oh, I was at bold security, so I could really make this a uh, one-two punch. Uh, stop. <laughs> oh. With a focus in hand-to-hand combat. Sweet. Okay, Captain. Um, first officer, uh, how you want to do this is up to you. I could ro- We could do with this in initiative or back and forth. We could just have the captain take a knee. <laughs> <laughs> I will let the captain go first if we are going into initiative. I'm a okay with that because you're only going to get one. Hopefully, fair enough. And for uh, for fairness's sake, what we probably want to do is keep your threat slash momentum pools separate. That way, you're not like stealing from each other. That's fair. I think that's fair for the for this part. Agreed. All right, Captain Crawford, you're up. Yeah. Um, just going to go for a normal kind of like right hook and just see what happens. Okay. I believe that would be daring plus security difficulty, or opposed to daring security because this is melee. Yeah. Oh, boy. He doesn't have a focus here. Good start, Captain. Good start. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. And I believe because you have two successes, you get to uh, make an immediate rebuttal if you wish. Yep. Yep. Which I believe I get with uh, unarmed attack. Is it one or two plus daring? One. Uh, one plus security. Yeah. Oh, one plus security. That's what I meant. Mm-hmm. You got lucky. Yeah, so as the captain, you know, steps forward and takes a swing, I just shout, you call that a punch, captain? I've seen my grandmother pass wind that was stronger than that. Great. Uh, Commander Galen, or at this point, Galen is starting to notice a significant number of personnel sort of clustering around the sparring ring. Games is going to raise an eyebrow at them and say, Yes? Can I help you with anything? Just here for the show, sir. You don't have work to do. Uh, they. Uh, a, one of them attempts to make a pithy remark, catches a side eye of Chief Ember, and immediately the crowd disperses again. I do shut <laughs> after them. <laughs> Not to worry, I'm hollow recording all of this, so you can look at this later. Your bets will be sufficient. They will be upheld. <laughs> all right. So, okay, so the two challenge dice non-lethal as the rebuttal. And I don't believe anyone's wearing anything that causes a resistance, so that's too stress to the captain. Mm-hmm. You okay there, Captain? You can keep going. Do you really want to do that? He kind of raises the gloves back up. If you say so. I'm going to give a, a point of threat for a third die. Okay, I'll take threat. That's... I'm swing back for an uppercut. Uh, Captain can roll daring security for opposed. If he ties, I think he gets to dodge. Uh, no, the defendant needs, oh, the defendant uh, in this case, to... three successes. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, I will hmm. point out, you do have determination. Mm -hmm. oh, Five one that would sort of, sort of apply here. Um... You now need four. I forgot I had bold. Okay. You're, you're just evil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of grinning ear to ear right at the moment. Oh, yeah. Um. Hmm. I'm going to try one of my... Uh, no, there's no point in case something dangerous happens later. I won't use my determination. is not going to go well at all. No, you... So you will take damage as one plus his security. Yeah. Oh boy. I, I have vicious because I have yeah. mean right hook. And because How much stress does the captain have? It's 12. I'm okay. Oh. Uh, so, wow. yeah, uh, five is the magic number. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you technically could stay up if you uh, spend two threat. It's not like you get injured and you're lethal, but you basically suffer a complication of some sort. Right. Um, or you could roll to avoid injury. But that That is what this is, is when you avoid the injury, you suffer a complication instead. Yeah. But you do have to pay the, the two threat or the two momentum cost. Ah. Yeah. Um, because what I think the way that mechanics works is that even if it's non lethal or five again, that would be all of my stress and it would become a lethal injury then, wouldn't it? <laughs> I believe so. Think... <laughs> Just don't get hit again. Yeah. <laughs> my, my daring security is 10. Um,. 
Mine's a 15. Uh, uh, I'm just going to have the captain go down. So with grace and elegance, I throw an uppercut and it just creams the captain and he goes flying back onto his back. Out of character. Sure you can. <laughs> well, Commander Dolrum, congratulations. You no longer need to show up for physical training so long as you stick to a daily regiment. Uh, the captain, however, apparently I need to teach how to keep his gloves up because my God, did I not see that punch coming from a mile away? And the cap came out. Uh, the captain is conscious, but very woozy at the moment. I go over and help him up. Yeah, get a little transfer on over and just see if he's okay. There's a standard concussion check and everything like that. Well, just because you might want, need momentum later on, let's do a um, control medicine difficulty zero. Medicine. Uh, anatomy for focus? That would work. That would be three, six, three momentum already. Nice. Yeah, the captain has uh, the captain has a dislocated jaw, minor concussion, and might need a uh, couple teeth to be regenerated. But other than that, nothing too severe, and nothing that an hour in sick bay won't fully fix. Captain, yes, doctor. Do you want to look up for a second? Yeah. As he starts okay. to look up, I set his jaw back in place. <laughs> oh. There we go. Let's get you to sick bay. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Out of character. The Hiro Yui bone setting treatment. It's that's painful. <laughs> <laughs> it's quick. <laughs> yeah. This is what happens when you're a politician and not a fighter. <laughs> uh, before you do hobble off with the the, uh, the doctor, though, I do stop you and I say, So, Captain, I expect you to show up tomorrow morning at 0400, and uh, I'm going to teach you how to dodge in the best way possible. And I point over at a rack of dodgeballs. I'm going to be throwing those at you until you learn how to dodge. That seems fair. <laughs> and he, having his jaw set in place after talking, kind of like, aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Tomorrow at 400, and he'll kind of just follow the doctor. <laughs> keep your dog jaw clenched right now. Let's not talk too much. Mm-hmm. And he'll just escort him to sick bay. <laughs> All right. What are the rest of you doing standing around? You two, back in the ring. And I start yelling at people sparring in the ring again, as I like to do. Ensign Ramirez goes, oh, I was hoping that would last longer. Oh, yeah, Ramirez, remember, two strips of latinum, fork it over. And End of my shift, sir. I, you want me to finish this sparring first, correct? Tell you what, if you can beat Mendoza there, I'll cancel the bet. But we all know Mendoza's going to wipe the floor with your ass. I just need one good hit, sir. Mendoza comes in, knocks him out. I told you. He did not get that good hit. Uh, Master Chief, I think it would be quite fun if you and I were to go toe-to-toe one of these days. Oh, it would be fun. And by fun, I mean very short. But uh, I can always try to pencil you in. Well, I've heard from my (laughs) son that you... um, are a really heavy hitter. I'm interested. Oh, is this about how I sort of got him a drink at a certain bar and he more or less had problems? I did not know about that, but now I now have questions for my son. Carry on. I turn around and walk out the room, hitting my communicator, asking for Zyler. Yep, and I just laugh and then go back to shouting. 
Uh, okay. Our next scene was going to be in Ops, but now I think it's going to be in Sick Bay, where the captain is going to be recovering slightly. Uh, Dolrum, where do you wish to go after this? Back to Ops or somewhere else in mind? I'll go back to Ops, but Xyler will be getting a stern talking to when we get home. Indeed. Something about taking drinks from red-skinned women. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Captain Crawford is being treated at one of the biobed bays. Just the concussion is finally starting to wear off, Captain. You're going to have some bruising, probably, but yeah, builds character. Um, all right. of us. Oh, sorry. I said, all right. <laughs> um, all of a sudden, the uh, you get a calm chirp from Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett. Cap, uh, Sullivan Barnett to the captain. Ahead, Lieutenant. Oh, good. Um, sir, you're not going to believe this. We're picking up a Borg signal from a nearby star system. Of... Um... And he kind of glances up at Lieutenant Galen, like... Ops, kind of look. <laughs> uh, one second, and I'm just going to stick him in the with a hypospray. Mild anti-inflammatory. Should keep you able to move your jaw a bit. If you start to bite your cheek, stop talking. Okay. All right, uh, Lieutenant Barnett, uh, I'm on my way. Yes, sir. See you up there. And despite usually being a cagey person, Barnett sounds a little more antsy than usual. Probably because he had to use the B word. Yeah. Okay. Understandable. Yeah. Okay, we are off to ops. Okay. Dolrum has been here for a while. Captain wanders in, and Sullivan Barnett is already there. As soon as I put his token in place. Let me center this for stream. There we go. All right. Anyone else wish to be on ops for this particular scene? Uh, probably upon hearing there's a Borg signal, uh, Crawford would probably definitely order the ops if she didn't find out already. Uh, so are you cut out there? Uh, I would want Ember there if she didn't find out about this already. Yeah, I, I think it's probably fair that I would show up pretty quickly. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, I don't know... Uh... I mean, a after her meeting with the captain, uh, Larce probably would have been uh, organizing a, a lab with assistance from uh, Rami. But uh, if you want her up there, she can. She can. She can be up there. Uh, I don't think she's needed at the moment. Okay. Okay. Um, if you want to toss Jensen up there, sure. Jensen's been in ops yet, so let's find his token. Jensen would find out and just somehow appear, and we'll go, where did you come from? He just wanders around the uh, impasse, or he walks out of this doorway here. We're not entirely sure where that doorway goes, but Jensen seems to come out of it a lot. <sighs> just pokes random buttons on different panels as he walks past them. <laughs> kind of like a turbo lift. He works when the plot is necessary for it. Precisely. <laughs> Precisely. Okay. Why is my console still broken? Why does no one fix this console? <sighs> I go over a different console. You're welcome, Master Chief. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's pull this up. Here we go. Okay, so uh, Sullivan Barnett is already tapping away furiously at the at his science console. Uh, Captain, good, okay. So we've been receiving... Uh, or the few uh, ships that have been outside the nebula have reported several, you know, 
radio waves and, tel- and sig- communication signals coming from this system, and he pulls it up, and it's a roughly... It's about a 15 light year journey, so a hop, skip, and a jump from the nebula. It looks like a pretty standard civilization, pretty close, on, almost ready to break the warp barrier, if I had to guess. But uh, K- Class K, uh, let's see, Class K, star, five planets, four regular, one gas giant, heck of a lot of asteroids, um, one solar, or one habitable Class M world. Anyways, um, oh yeah, and there's a moon. It seems to be inhabited, probably ec- probably settled a while back, anyways. Anyways, not entirely sure how it's penetrated the nebula, sir, but we intercepted a... Because we're... Ah, because we keep a close eye on the all-communication activity from the hub, well, we detected an inbound signal for the first time. Some sort of... Looks like an interplexing beacon, if I had to guess. Not sure, Borg technology, not my... St- not my strong suit. We should talk to Usha. Anyways, um, anyways, this thing came online about an hour ago, and he'll, uh, the system changes, uh, zooms in on the uh, third planet. Uh, this is the, this appears to be the Class M planet, sir. They, what transmissions I'm able to pick up determine that it's called Eban, and the primary species is the Ebani. Not don't know much. No, haven't sent any probes their way. You know, pre-warp civilization and all that. And then all of a sudden, well, we got a Borg signal coming from there, sir. Any theories? I mean, the Borg are extinct. Do you think they could have found a piece of technology there and somehow revived it? Uh, he'll shrug a bit, and given how close we are to the transwarp hub, sir, it's quite probable that a lot of Borg remnants, Borg technology remnants are around. These guys could have gotten lucky. Maybe they unearthed something. I don't know. But, well, it's worth a look, sir. Mm. Master Chief Ember, from all we know, this could lead to a reawakening of the Borg. Let's get over there. Uh, Lieutenant Darval speaks up. Captain, sir. I am detecting three sh- uh, three signatures entering the Carsine Nebula. Can you identify them? Uh, yeah, I thought to say the same thing. Yes, sir. Uh, one is Klingon, one is Romulan, and one is, he raised an eyebrow, Ferengi. That's an interesting trio. They are probably here to make sure that all of our information gets back to their own governments. It's likely, uh, and it seems like we'll have to tell them about this as well. Yeah, out of character. Uh, so, a Klingon, a Romulan, and a Ferengi walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, on... Oh, I realize I have now been blocking out the stream. I apologize for that. Uh, so, we'll, scene will shift real quick to the outside of the station. We'll get rid of that. Where three ships move into position. <laughs> Captain, we're receiving two hails. One from the Klingons and one from the Romulans. On screen. Both of them, sir? Um, let's, let's screen this. Let's go. <laughs> All right, this is where the fun begins. On screen, a fairly young woman in traditional Romulan gear, or uh, Romulan outfit, I suppose, appears on the left side of the screen. And a fairly old Klingon, as soon as I get into the right layer and make her token appear, and a fairly old Klingon appears on the right. They both immediately start trying to speak over one another, realize that they're both talking to you at the same time, and then they both continue anyways. (laughs) Oh, great. 
Uh, then we didn't get a hail from the Ferengi as well. No, the Ferengi uh, have decided to play it quiet for the moment. Smart of them! Captain, I am Ambassador Hinesa. Captain, I am Ambassador Klathoff. Son of Darvok. Uh, Ambassador Hinesa and Ambassador Klathoff, uh, the Karstein Nebula and Tina, uh, what brings you to this part of space? I'm here at behest of my government, Captain. As am I, you overgrown oaf. There is no way that I'm letting a Romulan get more intelligence on this treasure trove of information. Let's keep the bickering down while we are in open communications. And you sort of give a side eye to each. Agreed. Best wor- words should be said in private. And Hinesa just goes, hmm, fine with me. Whichever one of you is in charge of docking, assist us in this endeavor. No way am I leaving my ship out to be ravaged by this nebula. Of course, uh, we'll say. Uh, and Crawford to Ensign Jenkins. Jenk, uh, this is Jenkins, sir. Uh, Please prepare a docking sequence to give coordinates to both uh, an ambassador Hinesa. Uh, make it quick. Absolutely, sir. Captain, while they are docking, why don't we contact our third visitor? Uh, we might as well. Uh, Lieutenant Darval, uh, open hailing frequencies to the Ferengi ship. Yes, sir. And up pops a, Fer- a female Ferengi, wearing the tr- wearing a fairly gaudy outfit. Um, and those familiar with uh, the loose uh, the loose association known as the um, ranking system in Ferengi culture, she actually wears the pips of a daemon, which is very rare for Ferengi females. Ah, uh, Captain and. Um, despite the fact that she's on screen, she has a fairly lavish footstool with her feet propped up, and she's sort of lounging back. I figured you would want to talk to me after these two goons. Um, I'll ask the same question that I asked them. I are in this part of space, but I am assume it's for those two are. Uh, sorry, out of out of game, folks. Is your audio getting a bit robotic-y? A little bit. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fine really on getting, my end. I, I'm not getting robotic that much. I'm just getting a few, fair, few bits of cutout here and there. Yeah, I'm noticing drops with uh, Crawford. Yeah. Uh, let's. I'm just going to hop servers real quick. See if that helps any. Also, I'll turn my mic sensitivity up down a bit see if that helps okay servers changed sorry about the inconvenience um captain my name is i'm damon gong of the federation trade frigate the limitless latinum i have come to set up a shop on your on your station as well as i suppose do whatever i need to do to get information on this glorious opportunity for profit that you're currently in orbit of. Uh, well, then, by all means, Damon, if you send some representatives, we're more than willing to talk with them. Uh, Captain, I so look forward to this. I can work you into a cut, of course. I think if I'll be doing most of the exploration on the other side... I'm thinking maybe an 80-20 split. After all, it is my ship and crew going to the ri- to do the ah, doing risk of exploration. But of course, it wouldn't be possible without your station's existence and support. But we can, my people can talk to your people. Of course, I'll have you talk with them. Um, see here, I don't specialist think Paul. He'll quite the expert and. Diplomatics, I'm sure he 
he can work something out with you just fine. Unless you would like to speak to me directly. Ah. Captain after my own lobes. Mm. Sorry, Captain. Not interested in those in such an obvious innuendo. But you are one of the most handsome who've tried. And she tries to bat her eyelashes in a what you think is a flirtatious manner. It's hard to tell with Ferengi. Ah, well, we will follow... Keeps a straight face, but inside he's cringing. We will we will follow these other ships in, and I'm more than willing to reimburse you if you put us in a docking bay that is far away from their ships, lest they start shooting at one another. There's plenty of space. I'm sure we can work something out, Diamond. Excellent, Captain. I look forward to uh, this arrangement. And with that, she winks out, and Darval informs you that she is setting a course for the docking bay that is, or the docking hatch that is on the far side of the station. Alrighty. Uh, Commander, Lieutenant, since... I found this signal. I believe it best that the two of us are the ones that the three of us, jeez, I can't count. Um, meet our Romulan and Klingon friends to discuss this information. Uh, sorry, you cut out when assigning orders. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, uh, ordering Commander Dorham and Lieutenant Barnett to meet up with our two ambassadors with me with oh. our visitors okay so you so you three are heading down to meet the cavalcade of ambassadors all right and uh, what are the others doing so just to make sure that i understand correctly we're still getting that inbound signal yes correct yes then that's where my attention is going to be all right um if you do you wish to well so you can take a ship if you'd like. Um, it's fifteen years light, or it's a fifteen light year journey. So that's only a day's trip away at warp uh, warp five, if I remember my math right. Might be a little longer, but not not too terrible at all. Oh, if you take a ship. My question was going to be, um, because I probably should ask this the last time we used a Slutner. Um, does a Slutner have multi-adaptive shielding? Um, good question. Um, probably not. Uh, they would just be okay. uh, whatever a runabout shield would be with probably a little more juice added to it. Okay, because multi-adaptive is the pseudo-cloaking one. Um, so if it doesn't have that... Mm-hmm. Um, I think what I'm going to do is send a class, I think it's a class eight probe okay. uh, towards the signal and just sort of wait to see what the, the probe shoots back. Because if I remember my probes properly, it should get there pretty quickly. Fairly quickly, yes. Um, to ensure a proper travel outside the nebula, it's best to take a ship to launch it through the gateway. But I'm, that's easy enough with just commandeering one of the pilot crews real quick. Yeah, I'd probably yell at Darval to get one of his uh, his flight people on it. Darval nods silently and takes care of it. <clears throat> okay, so we are going to be meeting some people. Okay, um, Barnett, because I don't want to take control of a character for longer than necessary, um, he's just going to say... All respect, Captain, you're going to be talking to a lot of people, and I don't want to talk to these people. They know very little about sciencey things. I'm just going to go back to my lab. All right, Lieutenant, that's fine. Okay. So, we... Jensen's going to slip into their turbo uh, lift. Ooh, a turbo lift scene. I like turbo lift scenes. Um... I thought I had one. I do not have a turbo lift. Okay, we'll just go to the imagination station for whatever happens on the turbo lift. <laughs> Ever seen, you know, Winter Soldier? That elevator scene? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
I, I'm thinking more. I when I when I think elevator scenes, I, I think more NCIS. You know, Gibbs and how he shuts down the elevator for a private chat. Mm, yep. I mean that's been done before and could be done again if you'd like. Okay. Is anyone going to talk, or is this just going to be awkward silence in the turbo lift? I'll keep awkward silence. Fine by me. Just. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm not. I need to look at his rank again. As he kind of steps in, I'll just kind of give a nod and just say, "Grelic." She just look at you. Just have this most contempt look for you ever. You just look away. Alrighty. Excellent. I mean, every now and then, awkward silence has to happen. I think it's good for character. Okay. Assume at one point there's one of those like awkward coughs. You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so because apparently I didn't upload the triple lift set, we'll just pretend or actually for that matter an airlock set we're just going to pretend that this happens on the entrance to the boulevard and we'll actually move the players to the boulevard ooh indeed nice piece of artwork you could throw so many people off the balcony as uh, Jensen I I'm a f <laughs> that Okay. <laughs> I'm not even sure I'm can dig. Okay, so out of the main airlocks towards the bull the boulevard, there steps several different groups of people, almost all simultaneously. The first is a batch of Romulans. Um question for you, Jim. Yes. Are any of the Breen ambassadors aboard the station? No, you were the only representative that they saw fit to send at the moment. Excellent. Yes. I'm not... We'll just put these guys over here. Out of a nearby air... Out of a adjoining turbolift, we'll step a cluster of Klingons. I wonder if... I think the plural for Klingons should be gang. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> a gang of Klingons. And just because it feels like fun to have them show up, a couple uh, Ferengi, both female, step out of yet another entranceway. And it isn't long what? before the population <laughs> just sort of clears out. What I think be... for... Uh... <laughs> Yeah. What should be the name for a cluster of Ferengi? A prophet, of course. Oof. For Romulans, I'll, I will say uh, it should be a murder. <laughs> or a conspiracy. Also Oof. possible. A congress. Uh, either way. Um, <laughs> so whatever activity on the boulevard immediately parts as these three groups or four groups in your case, all cluster together. Note, um, probably at a silent er, or a subtle communication from the Chief Ember, several security officers make themselves apparent along the corridor. Good idea. <laughs> mm. I also have my phaser at my side, just as a precaution. Good idea. Naturally, uh, Ambassador Klathov is the first to bluster his way in. Um, you, cer you see that he is a Klingon, even though that he is a fairly old Klingon, um, he is still in very good shape. Uh, his two bodyguards uh, let seem to be perfectly acceptable with him taking the lead. Captain, you do me a great honor by accepting us onto your station. Ambassador Klathov, uh, welcome to Deep Space 15. Mm. Yes. Very shiny. I can't wait to see how it's 
metal is tested in battle. We haven't had to do that yet, but let's hope it doesn't come to that soon. Oh, not to worry, Captain. I've I've been keeping close eye on these Romulans. They have an itchy trigger finger. It's only been itchy because your cruiser insisted on locking weapons on our vessel at least seven times during this transit. Seven? Are your sensors that poor that they could not detect our other attempts? Ha! I shall be sure to take this intelligence back with me. You've grown weak, Romulan. I'll step forward, ambassadors. Mm. Let's keep the bickering to a little bit. I understand our governments don't always get along, but we are not within the jurisdiction of any of our one government. So let's get along so it doesn't become messy. <laughs> Makes a hrump sound. Where, uh, um, the Ambassador Hinesa steps forward and two of her guard, uh, Cujo and Vrovine, uh, step forward with her just a bit to shield her from any potential attacks from the Klingons. Captain, and she bows and makes the uh, ra, ah, the standard Romulan uh, diplomatic greeting. It is a gr it has been some time since one of us has set foot on your sta on Federation station as friends, and I hope it will continue to be so. Despite our allegiance with the Typhon Pact, um, out of curiosity, is Jensen wearing Typhon or Breen armor at the moment? Uh, he will be wearing the um, ambassador or attaché emblem on his uh, jacket. Okay. It is... I hope that we can stay friends and that this may prove to be a continuation of Federation Romulan friendship. And uh, I as well, Ambassador. Uh, Cujo quickly whispers something into Hinesa's ear, and her eyes immediately lock with Michael Jensen. Oh, her eyes narrow. I see a representative of our most esteemed allies, the Breen, has already made his arrival. I've been here for some time. I look forward to learning, to working with you. Now, the Romulan, the Rom, ah, the Romulan Star Empire will always uh, prizes its uh, relationship with our Breen, with the Breen allies. Yes, the Romulan Empire is always pleased with all of their allies. Uh, oh, if it wasn't for a, uh, if it wasn't for our sharing of technology, the Breen would still be trying to be figure would still try to figure out how to improve their cloaking devices. Well. We look forward to a continued joint adventure and endeavors for new designs. After all, it was the brain that reminded the Federation that they're not untouchable. I do remind you all of the Dominion War and the energy dampening weapon we possess. And he'll just smile looking at Crawford. Yes, we all remember. Uh, Ambassadors, please, uh, escort you to some diplomatic quarters and yeah, to trade information unless you would want that now. Please send it down to our embassies, Captain. It has been a long, stressful trip, and I look forward to unwinding first for the evening before getting down to business. First. Unlike this Romulan sapling, I will t I will take whatever information you get you you have for us now. I look for I'm in I would enjoy seeing the tactical information of any species that you may have encountered across the way. Of course, um, Commander Dolrum, if you would uh, escort Ambassador Nesa to and her guards to their quarters. At this moment, you hear. An un a familiar sound of me metal on metal as Ambassador Odok comes out of one of the turbo lifts. I thought I smelled you. Are you are you one of Jim Pock's 
dogs, Klathov. What are you doing out here? Ambassador Klathov just looks... Oh. 400 light years, and this blind fool still pesters us so. Enough! I don't care for you. Leave us alone, Odok. Uh, Odok just well, laughs. Ambassador Klathov, Odok has been here for quite some time. Really? He And you haven't kicked him off the station yet? I'm surprised. For being such a blind guy, he sure is nosy. Odok just laughs. I found my way out here long before you ever did. Rest my words, Klathoff. This'll be the end of you here. Jensen's gonna look at both of them and like, gentlemen, if you wish to marry yourselves, I believe the infirmary can assist you with that. Uh, Odok just laughs. I knew there was a reason I liked you, Jensen. Your wit. And Odok... <sighs> Odok just turns and and leaves, not paying no paying no heed to the venomous glare cast upon him by the rest of the Klingons. The Romulan ambassador just looks thoroughly confused. Gong looks bored. Well, Ambassador, if you will follow me this way, I will take you to uh, show you the embassy and then to your diplomatic quarters. Splendid. And with that, Dolan takes off. Several Klingons in tow. Oh, before they all leave, Mm -hmm. Jensen's going to say one thing to all of them. In the spirit of cooperation and free information, nothing will be hidden. I will make my reports available to all of you as well, just to compare and ensure that the Starfleet is being upfront and truthful. Hinesa is quick to double in on that. Absolutely. I think that is a brilliant way to start a, a coalition of this nature. Klathoff goes, goes, fine, whatever. And Damon Gong says, well, I suppose we could do the same for a couple strips of latinum per report. Oh, fine. We'll just do it pro bono. Just this once. <laughs> Damon, I did not know that the Fringri had that word in their vocabulary. Negus Rom has introduced some... How should we say radical adjustments to the Ferengi uh, rules of acquisition and how we do business. Notably, I suppose I should thank him. After all, I wouldn't, I could not openly command a vessel if it weren't for his political, um, for his political uh, changes. However, if you think I, if you think you should underestimate me just because I have smaller lobes than a male Ferengi, You've got another thing coming. Pex, go oh. find the uh go find this embassy and set up shop there. Once you get whatever information is gained by this, send it to my ship. I believe I should send a thank you letter to your Grand Negus for allowing you to be here and giving us the honor of your presence. I think it's quite fascinating that you have such a sharp wit and a keen mind to be a rank and position of your current stature. You must be very clever and smart. She shrugs. I have my methods. And between you and me, Captain, the Negus doesn't yet know that there's anyone out here from our government. I basically bought this. I gained information through some wheelings and dealings, let's say. And cause, you know, rule uh, rule 204 of the uh, of the ah, the rules of acquisition. The profit is the profit is greatest when the profit is made alone. And she'll tap her com badge and this is 
Dong to the li limitless latinum. Beam me straight to my quarters and have a have a champagne bath ready for me. Yes, I know how much it will cost, but I think this is worth it. And she materializes away, and Pex just sort of slinks on after the Klingons. To the diplomatic wing of the promenade. Indeed. Okay, so we'll get to embassies shortly. Let's cut back to Ops, where Master Chief Ember is busy looking at probe readouts. Okay, so I'm just going to cut you straight to the system in question. At warp 9, the probe is uh, the probe reaches there within a couple of hours. And this is what you see. Pay no heed to this ship since you haven't taken it there yet. <clears throat> All right, what you what the probe detects is a system of fairly uh, fairly a frequent or a fairly well along the development scale. Um, it is um, grandiose cities litter the continents. Uh, there are three continents, uh, one moon, and the moon has a sizable uh, city built upon it already. Uh, evidence of several satellite networks and a ring of asteroids and other stellar debris ring the planet. It's a fairly thin ring. Um, so, someone... I'm assuming you'll be working with uh, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett in astrometrics for information? Um, possibly, you but, you know, it's... You know, we've we've got a uh, large number of supporting characters that could Indeed. do the science role yeah. if need be. That's a good point. Uh, Usha, being a Borg expert, might be a good one for this. Uh, yep, Aron. pulling up her sheet. All right. Usha. And since this is an activation, Oops. I get to add something to her. You do indeed. All right. Uh, are we treating this like a standard sensor role? Uh, let's do, yep, sensors and, or insight and science, please. Uh, reason, you mean? Reason. Yes, I'm sorry. Reason, science. Well, uh, I diff should say difficulty one. Yeah. Then uh, that is a success. That is a success. Wonderful. Okay. What you get out of the out of the roll is that the uh, Borg signature is indeed what you uh, what is known as an I believe is an interplexing beacon. It is a beacon which is supposed to synchronize um, with the with an ah. With another hive mind, then back, then to the next hive mind, and then back to wherever it calls home, uh, thereby linking the collective. And from this interplexing beacon, it can then uh, uh, guide local drones to do whatever is necessary. Um, based on Usha's uh, role, you're able to see that it is emanating from a site that is on the moon that is separate from the city uh, roughly 10 kilometers due west of the city uh, there appears to be a small structure uh, built there in traditional architecture of the city mostly white brick fairly uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking fairly streamlined structures and it's emanating from there Okay. Um, if people are okay with it, I'd like to spend a momentum to ask the question. Mm -hmm. um, does it look like this species is actively using the interplexing beacon, or have they simply set up what is essentially a shrine or a museum or whatever sort of, you know, come look at this thing we found kind of a deal? Um, so, um, that, you're, so you're now down to two momentum. Uh, what you... S uh, this does appear to be a research facility, um, separated from the rest of society. Um, there does seem to be a lot of others. Now that the probe is closer, you're able to see a lot more communication between uh, that, between this. I'll just call it the dome, and the nearby city. A lot of it is, will require 
a closer presence to decipher, decrypt, intercept. But it does appear that there's active presence there more so than a tourist trap. Okay. Um, yeah, that's probably all I can ask then without actually going there myself. Um, you, I should also give this to you because you're already there. Um, one of the things that your probe also picks up is a lot of chatter about the uh, two economic blocks working together for the first time in a long while to finally explore or send uh, citizens beyond the solar system. Uh, they, there is boast of a faster than light system that is about ready to be tested. And when is the uh, approximate time of that test? Oh, roughly, t roughly a day and a half from now. All right. Well, I will make the relevant reports because I believe the whole criteria of first contact is the moment they hit FTL uh, and it's success, that's when you show up and say, hey, welcome to the universe. That's, that's pretty much it. So I'm hearing we need to take a mission there. It's it right outside the. Indeed, it is. Um, I sh um, so. I'm just going to have a quick scene with Dolrum and the Klingons. In the Klingon Embassy. Okay, so, Odok is not present. But room is and it of course doesn't look like this yet some internal redecorating will have to happen but mm. sorry about that okay doll room you are now the Klingons look at it um, they brandish their weaponry put it off to the side and begin to make themselves at home Charming. It even smells of Odok. Well, he has been helping us prepare this embassy suite for the delegation's eventual arrival. Yes. I'm assuming, or what has he told you about me? Because I could, what I could tell you about him would fill a warehouse. Odok's. For the most part, kept to himself. It hasn't told us anything that I can recall about you specifically. Good. Between you and me, that man, ha that Patak, has no honor, and the only reason he became a monk was to hide from justice. Well, Ambassador, out here, like I said in the boulevard we are away from all of our governments and yet we have to represent them don't we indeed he mutters to himself fine and he'll tap away at his console i see that we don't have direct access into your systems i suppose that is fine for now the station is still very recently set up um, we've been kind of shunting power around to uh, assist in all of the development still happening uh, since this was unused we set, shunted everything away uh, for minimal access um, until it was needed mm. we can have you set up for full systems access here shortly Splendid. Right. And he immediately says, uh, and he'll immediately just start working at a computer and raise a hand go, right, we're done. Is there something I can help you with, Ambassador? Nope. You can go and resume your duties. We will be fine here. Very well. If you should need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. To ask, um, if the captain is unavailable, I am the first officer of the station. Uh, 
and I should be able to assist you in any way possible. Splendid. Good day. Indeed. You guys have a wonderful afternoon. Uh, okay. Okay, so... Uh, what would you go? What scene would you guys like to do next? Um, what are our options? Let's see. So, um, logically, there would be the captain deciding what to do about this signal. Uh, there could be more pol- political interplay, um, or whatever else you'd like between you guys. Well, if we, it, we could do a scene with uh, Larce <laughs> okay. looking at, at her new lab. Excellent. Very well. We maybe shall. maybe setting up her first official project in said lab. Okay. Uh, give me a split second here while I bring you to your lab. That would be this one here. At least for the moment. Larsai, welcome to the cybernetics lab. Okay. Let's well... Okay, so Larce would be uh, finish, finishing up setting up some of her equipment, including in uh, one particular booth an EV suit, w- one that she's used before in the past. Rami, are you there? It... I'm always, I'm always present, Lieutenant. Ah, good. They. Uh, I'm pro- probably going to need your help a bit on a few projects, just uh, main- maintaining records and flipping through and, and shifting uh, between uh, shifting schematics and such. I will be happy to assist in whatever means is uh, to whatever means my programming allows. Thank you very much. So, okay, let's get uh, and she looks at the. Uh, E- EV suit and uh, then goes to a terminal and starts uh, typing up some potential modifications she wants to make with it. I mean, and in her mind, the EV suit works and she's definitely very good at EV operation, extravehicular operations, but it, there was a time she had, actually had to spend a whole, a whole lot of time in an EV suit and... She she knows it could use a few improvements. I'm analyzing your proposed modifications to the thrusters. I pro- I project a ten percent increase. However, your the fuel consumption will be significantly higher. Yeah, I'm gonna need to figure out some some way to. Either reduce the fuel consumption, or maybe make, or maybe invent some sort of new power source for this thing. And that's not, and that's not mentioning the, and that's not mentioning the other utilities this thing is going to have. I understand. That's. Are you looking to incorporate your? And she'll pause for a second. I believe you've referred to it as an exo tricorder into this. Well, it it'd certainly be you, I, I guess. I at least may uh, insert some sort of interface so I can access it while while wearing the suit. That should be fairly straightforward to do. A simple modification to the onboard tricorders. However, the hollow the hollowed projectors will require some further further um, tweaking, I believe, was a fan of, or was the previous chief engineer's favorite saying. Right. Yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. And, of course, as she uh, works on some of the, her designs... But one thing that comes up is a pair of phaser emitters in the uh, palms for uh, a multitude of purposes. I mean, 
self defense is one, but uh, phasers are the <laughs> multi purpose cutting multi purpose tool of weaponry can be used for cutting as and welding as well. That is a very different style of Nadeon particle generator and focusing array. I'm not entirely certain I've seen that in... I don't believe any of my records indicate that... Ah, I don't have a design in any existing Federation spec for it. Yeah, well, it was something that came to mind. I mean, using a fa- I If you're... Ca- I, Sometimes it's easier to do it to find, use some a tool in such a way that I, I phasers even the, even the st- standard handheld ones can be a little clumsy when you're using the when you're shifting from using them to straight up handheld work so why not integrate them into the gloves and uh, that way once you finish your finish working with them you can just Turn them off and go straight to direct hand, uh, direct war, uh, direct ma- manipulation of whatever it is you're working on. That seems like a fairly straightforward and logical design. I look forward to working with you on this, Lieutenant Larsay. Uh, agreed. I'm definitely looking forward to working with you on this. All right. Okay, so let's have a, um, to keep things moving, um, so Captain, what would you like to do? Actually, let's just go up the scenes now that everyone has ideas. Uh, Master Chief Ember. So... Really, I think the question is going to be, you know, to the captain of whether or not, you know, is the captain going himself on this mission to investigate the signal? Um, If so, do we want an angry red demon looking woman there to provide, you know, it's kind of a it's a statement wherever she goes. So it's it's kind of a thing of what sort of appearance does the captain want to, you know, do for first contact? Mm hmm. Or would you like to discuss this in a conference room by chance? I, I think a conference room would probably be I best with the senior so. staff. Let's do that. Yeah. Um, a blaring announcement comes over all comm badges, all senior staff. Please report to the conference room. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's go to the conference room. Here we go. Oh, it's been a while. Okay, we don't need him. We don't need these guys here. Uh, let's see, he'll just... And I will bring in, if it's all right... Uh, actually, now we'll wait. So, get to the token layer. One, two, three, four, five... I'm missing Larce. Yeah. Not anymore, we're not... Okay. Well, Master Chief, uh, what were you able to discover? Uh, Long story short, it looks like uh, we've got a species that is about to make its first break through FTL, which I believe necessitates a first contact scenario, uh, especially because they have an interplexing beacon of Borg design on their moon, which apparently they are attempting to research, or at least that's what Usha tells me. Now, we don't want ourselves to appear hostile, but have reactivated a bit of Bork technology. I do believe some caution is necessary. Yeah, I mean, even if they're extinct, anything, any any Bork tech can be uh, pretty dangerous if not properly handled. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Believe that a mix of security teams would be 
good to take with us, but... I'll do respect, Master Chief. Your appearance might come across as a little bit intimidating, which might be necessary. But we also don't want to scare them as soon as we arrive. Um... Well, I suppose it's a question of whether or not you think you can actually learn to dodge in the day it'll take you to get there. Because if not, I probably should be going just to keep you safe. Now, now, Master Chief, I'm perfectly capable of doing the exact same thing. Right, but I also believe there's a regulation that you both can't go on the away mission together. I would call that a very good suggestion. Oh, Dr. Galen, do you have any you want to come with us? If it's a first contact mission, we should establish base protocol for possible infections uh, from either side. Uh, We would want to make sure that the first meeting goes well and no one gets sick. So we would need to do reconnaissance first. Great. Sounds like you're the perfect man for the job. Yes. Uh, Lieutenant Yamato, want to come with us, or would you rather stay here and try to get acclimated with your... Um, well, I suppose I suppose I should come along. If nothing else, I can uh, may- maybe help out uh, in uh, dealing with that interplexing beacon if the need arises. Very good. Um, looks like we'll have about the entire senior staff. Um, if Ember is telling us, Commander Dolm, I think it's best that you stay here. I think I'll be the one going on this away mission. Myself, uh, first contact can prove therapeutic in its own way. I would agree, and I have a feeling I'm going to be sparring with some Klingons before the end of this week. At this point, Rami decides to make a quick appearance. Captain, Commander, I should, ah, inf- Rami. I should inform you that I've, det- I've detected and blocked three different attempts from the Romulan embassy to breach the sand or the sandbox protocols in place I'm they uh, however this is pretty much standard Romulan operating procedure at any of their embassies on Federation territory there have also been several uh, threats of violence thrown across the hallways I personally believed it humorous to assign them embassies across the hall from one another. (laughs) We have limited space. It'll be fine. I will go put out fires. Maybe fuel some fires. We'll see what happens. And she will quickly vanish back into the ether. Um, Captain... I, I know I said I would be uh, all right with going, but if you feel I should stay here just in case something uh, goes wrong and breaks uh, and causes things to break, I no. would accept that. Now, Chief, we can figure this out. Don't worry about us here. The station will still be here when you get back. Our second in command specialist, Nia, he's qualified. I'm sure he'll be fine. All right. All right. So don't worry well, about it. You'll have a job. Everyone, uh, you're dismissed. Okay. So my understanding is that Captain Galen and Master Chief are nope. Sorry, Captain Galen and Yamato are on the lunette. Yes, and I believe Master Chief Ember is as well. If that discussion went how I remembered. <laughs> Yeah, like, so if yeah. Ember's not going, then somebody on the security team that she trusts is. Okay. Um, I I will leave it up to you. Uh, 
let's get over to the lunette just so that I can start placing tokens. So there are you three, Larce. Um, now, what supporting characters would you guys like to bring? Just so that I can keep everyone amused. Right. Um, let's have Ensign I'll... Mud be our be our Helms guy. Okay. I'll take Mud. All right. Let's see. Sai will be yeah. engineering. Support characters will be Ensign Mud on Helm. And I believe that's one for everyone. Most yeah. of the crew is yeah. on. Cool. Uh, let's let's bring Ensign Ilya, just so we have a science guy with us. Ensign Ilya. Okay. Very well. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> And with that, the lunette disengages and flies away from the station. Should I roll, see if we can get some momentum? Um, sure. Um, let's say difficulty of one, just to get us out of the... Uh, so control plus helm, or pl control plus con, and the ship can assist with engines plus con. I can roll for the ship. I'm engineering, pretty much, so yeah. yeah. All right. Starship pilot as a focus. That would work. Okay, two yeah, successes says, already. Uh, character sheet. And Mud's being activated, so I'm going to search for something that nice. I should add for him. And I believe this also counts as a... An activation for Ilya, too. Yeah. Yes. Good show. Okay. Ships always have a focus. Yep, they do. Okay, two more momentum. <clears throat> okay, right. so. Contrary to, contrary to popular belief... Uh, so, we are actually going to have a quick scene on the station. Uh, roughly two hours go by after the uh, lunette leaves the station. Uh, Commander Dolrum, you are... Yes. You receive a hail from uh, ch the acting chief of security, uh, Dura. Uh, Commander uh, Dura here, there's a situation happening in the Eclipse that, quite frankly, I'm not qualified to handle. Could you elaborate a little bit, Dura? Well, sir, the... Uh, it's the Ferengi women, sir. They are drinking and parting it up, and they're doing it unclothed. And every time I've tried to suggest that they don some clothing and to not make a scene they say that it is their cultural right and expectation to not wear clothing sir well unfortunately that would be correct however i will come down and see if i can see uh move their party to a different location <laughs> Jensen is going to be the one sending drinks to the table all the time. <laughs> I'm not asleep. Oh, oh, of oh, course. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. man. Uh, I'm going ahead and setting up for uh, Nia's seat for if I need him for the station seat. Ah, yes. All right. Okay. So, despite it being the middle of a work shift, um, Specialist Nia appears at the bar table, already drinking a little heavier than one should expect someone who's currently supposed to be on duty. Ah, so I, I guess uh, my mentioning him was uh, uh, 
Yeah, I, I was just saying that I'd ha have the sheet ready for if he was needed. I wasn't expecting you to. It's part of his character now. We don't fight it. Uh, All right. Well, I'll uh, see about uh, finding something to put onto his sheet. Okay. Michael Jensen is in the corner, basically just paying for as much, paying for many drinks. Um, Mazzy is an odd shade of blue, which would one would associate with a blushing Bolian. Whereas the other two women, uh, Ferengi women, are having a time, let's say. Uh, Dura quickly, uh, uh, noticing your arrival, Commander, they, he quickly points in the direction of the two and says, Well, sir, that's where they are. You leave me all the fun jobs, don't you? Well, this is what happens when the Master Chief decides to leave the station for two hours, sir. Things go to shit. <clears throat> Sorry, sir. Language. I'm a pretty relaxed guy. It doesn't bother me. That and I had uh, uh, I had Ember's position at my previous posting, so I am unfortunately used to this. She... I'll walk over to the Frangies. Ladies, how are we doing? Commander, Commander, do take a seat. And they offer you a, they pat a, a seat that is ob quite uncomfortably close to them. I'll go sit down. Very well. The two Ferengi are rather both rather surpri quite surprised that you decided to actually take a step and or get that close considering all the gawkers that have refused to come within five meter five feet of them so ladies what are we celebrating tonight business venture of course the first drinks uh, are on we're on us and then the some mystery man keeps sending us more i side eye over to jensen I have an idea who that mystery man is, but let's continue. What kind of business adventures are we talking about here, dear? Why, whatever lies beyond these transport pubs, of course. We've already gotten the maps f forwarded to us from your lovely, uh, Rami system. And by our char, there's at least seven already built. Looks like we could have a thousand by the time this is all said and done. The Quark did such good business with one wormhole. We will be able to beat him, beat that cur ten times. It could be very uh, profitable, as well as very scientifically pleasurable for everyone going through. However, as Quark found out when we ventured through the wormhole, we found resistance. Hmm. She shrugs. Part of can't have ah, you can't make profit without a bit of risk. I totally agree, and I think the same would apply to scientific exploration. There's always a little bit of risk involved, and that is the fun of everything. <clears throat> ah, I like you, Commander. And she, the Damon, just wraps an arm around you, a little far closer than you're probably comfortable with. Um, I keep a straight face. Uh, I knew that I knew that we were kindred spirits. Sure, you, Federation treats science as a currency. I treat currency as a currency. The stuff that I expect to bring back, of course, we'll sell here first with only a minimal markup. The stuff that we that we'll send back to the the rest of the Alpha Quadrant, well, that markup will be significant, and I know a lot of people will pay for it. I'm sure you do. The Frankie always seem to have connections everywhere we go. I remember the Frankie uh, businessman that we had at my previous Starbase. I'm sure he was a lobeless individual who played his cons very far from the chest and was obvious every time he spoke. 
Some days. Some days he was crafty. He had a casino, though, which, I mean, come on. Every Frangie has a saint casino. <laughs> totally. Uh, so, ladies, if you're planning on setting up shop here, what kind of uh, business are we thinking here? General goods and services until we can narrow down the market, figure out precisely what this station will buy and sell. There will be several exploratory options, of course, a few f sales to generate interest. Hmm. Sounds like a lot of fun. Now, ladies, I have a question for you. Yes, Commander. Would you like to see some of the spaces that we have uh, that you could use for your business? Well, we were planning on just using the embassy as our main shop, but if you have more spacious spots available, even close, much closer to this bar would be a far more profitable venture. I'm sure Mr. Perrick would be good enough to get individuals inebriated enough so they would spend lots of latinum. Isn't that right, dear? Mozzie just looks up and gives a, gives a weak, tired grin. Mozzie's a great individual. I'm sure he'd be willing to do some business with you. Now, ladies, let's go adventure. Now, the only thing I had... Uh, explore through the boulevard the only thing i have to ask is since it is not normally culturally acceptable here to go without clothing could we put on some clothing and then we can explore we can explore different places for you guys to enjoy your cultural diversity uh, damon the damon and pex look at one another and they quickly give each other sort of a knowing nod Commander, if we are, we are more than willing to accept your request that we go clothed while on station. However, that will come at, oh, let's say a five... That request will cost you 3% of whatever a profit-sharing agreement we have in place. And on Fer Ferengi Embassy grounds, we wear what we like. On embassy grounds, in your quarters, we could have an entire section devoted to it. It's just, especially with the uh, possible possibility of new business part partners and ability of profit, you want to be able to please those who are coming through the door. Not that you aren't anatomically pleasing already. Captain, Capt, or Commander, sweet talking, a sweet talking, a, la a lady trying to worm more profit. You should know that doesn't work, even though the attempt is appreciated. Come, Pex, let's see what stores this station could offer us. Shall we? And Commander, just as you take a step to leave the bar, uh, the station rumbles just ever so slightly. It's not the traditional uh, gravimetric shift rumble that you've kind of gotten used to. This one's a bit more sudden. Uh, the station immediately goes to yellow alert, and there is a call for security personnel and medical personnel to report to the uh, to report to the Klingon embassy. And on that, <laughs> on that, point, <laughs> it sounds like there might have been. Uh... Violent altercation! Quite possibly. We will find out what that is eventually, but for the moment, let's get back to the lunette. Okay. So, um, what speed do you wish to make to the planet? Warp 5 will take about a day. Uh, warp 7 will take about uh, three quarters. Warp 9 will take you about a, f a few hours. Um, hmm. It's not like we have to be in the hugest hurry, but also they're about to break warp. Let's go for, how long did you say it would take at warp 7? Warp 7 will take about a half day. Uh, let, let's go warp 7. All right. 
Any scenes you guys would like to do on board the lunette before we reach the destination? It's not really a scene, but when the captain isn't expecting it, I pull out a little dodgeball and throw it at him, and I say, starting now, Captain, dodge! And I just throw it. I'm pulling, oh. I'm pulling some <laughs> bridge. Thing. I'm pulling some bridge pickle all there. Yeah. Yup. <laughs> okay, so what kind of task would this be? Like fitness con, I guess. Uh, fit. Um, I would say either fitness security or maybe even, yeah, fitness security or daring security, whichever you'd like. Um. Let's go with fitness security. Okay. I don't have anything here, but let's, let's say that this will be an opposed test. Oh boy! <laughs> I mean, sure. Ember, Ember could roll a complication, or then again, so could you. No, or, you know, not. No. Oh God Almighty! This isn't going to go good. All right, so fitness security. You have momentum. Sure, I'll use one momentum for a third die. Why not? Let's see here. Not enough. Yep. So the uh, the dodgeball hits you probably square in the middle of your head. Yeah. And uh, luckily for you. It's uh, it's a hollow dodgeball, so it doesn't really have oomph to it, but it's definitely enough of an impact for you to notice. It's like the red dodge. It's like the red balls we played with as kids. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Ah. Uh, I'll have to start working on that a little bit more. Yes. Apparently, and you, and apparently. You have let your guard down. Galen, throw yours now. Okay, more damage. Galen's just going to raise an eyebrow and is like, excuse me? What, did you not get the message I sent you five minutes ago? Do no harm. Not harm, it's a dodgeball. Psychological harm is a, is a form of abuse as well. Ah. It's a dodgeball, it's not going to hurt me. Yes, but you thinking it'll be one tossed at you after enough times, causing you to jump and panic, is not con- is not good for a captain. Keep them on his a dodgeball, Doctor. Very well. And I'll make one show up and I'll throw it at him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So what I have to do for myself is it going to be fitness and security because yeah. those are awful. Yep, fitness security for both of you, please. Uh, why should I bother making, you know, combat scenarios when you guys are perfectly capable of fighting each other? <laughs> I'm taking momentum for a third die because why not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're burning all of our momentum. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I burn it all. I have G- As GM, I don't. This is how the world ends. This is how the world ends. I do an underhand toss, so it's not a it's not a mean one. It just easily ducks out of the way. Muddle turn around and throw one. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> okay then. The sound of GM notes ripping up in the background, just you know. <laughs> Uh, if you guys want to do this, I'm cool with it. You know. And so I guess it's fitness security still. Mm-hmm. I don't steal a die for this one. So. Would close combat maneuvers count as a focus? I think <laughs> that is more in line with starship maneuvers than that. So unless you're planning to like throw phaser cannons at him. I mean... <laughs> Oh, oh dodgeball that looks like a phaser cannon. Mud turns around, hits it, it bounces off the uh, metal thing in between him and the captain and bounces back in his face. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. Okay. And apparently I now need to teach Mud how to throw a ball. Really, Mud? Really? What? 
you throw around the bar, not at the bar. The intent was around. <laughs> I threw at. Face <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 business, people. Yeah, Lars is probably not going to be worrying about that. She's going to, uh, while monitoring the, uh, in between monitoring the status of the ship, uh, the status of the ship, she's also going to continue working on designing on designing the suit, uh, her, the mod, designing the modification she's going to need to make to the suit. Okay. If if you want me to make a. Diff zero uh, en- engineering check of any kind, just to show yeah. show the process of uh, figuring out how things work. No, not yet. Um, okay. So, just to keep timelines more or less aligned, uh, we are going to cut back to the station, and this is going to be a bit of an investigative portion. So, I'm um, if folks could please find a supporting character that might work well for an investigation or if you know we lack any then we can start figuring that out well i did send you a sheet for someone uh, for someone who could possibly work there Um, Uh, that was a pdf sheet if you want to okay them i can uh, go ahead and put them in the let me have a quick look here, and if it is, then I'll make you a. Uh, sh- then I'll make you a thing. Um, there. Uh, I, I can can't bring in. Um... See the PDF. I'm sorry. Oh, I, can bring uh, I, I, I shared. I shared it oh. to you. I, I, oh. I didn't send you a link. I shared it to you through, uh, G- through uh, Google. Oh. Google. Google. Google Drive. Just send it to me through Discord. I have enough Windows open already. Please. Um, okay. So, All right. Um, so we are going to cut to the Klingon embassy. Um, Jensen actually has sabotage as a focus. Ah. Okay. Jensen wishes to sabotage. Okay. <laughs> um, Why he does is a mystery. <laughs> here. I it, there. Oh. Sent it. Thanks. Who's Nia for this? Okay. Well, I, I, I was, I was thinking of using Nia for engineering scenes, but then uh, Crawford sent a message saying he was hit. That was his character. Well, was, so if he, wants I was to, joking around. If you want to yeah. use him, it's you're free anytime. Just so yeah, like, gotcha. But yeah, if you, if you want to use him, go ahead. Yeah, I'll I, use I, him in this case. Okay. All right. All right, uh, let's see. So, legal counsel character, I mean, we probably should have one anyways with all these ambassadors starting to muddy the waters. Um, yeah. We do have Paul, yeah. which is somebody I made, but he's oh. kind of the diplomatic core. Oh, we have Paul. Uh, let me look at what Paul has. I think this is the first time we've used Paul. It is the first time we've used him, but he has diplomacy, linguistics, and xenoanthropology. Ah. Okay, so... Let's do this one at a time then. So, uh, Crawford, which character are you picking up? Uh, Specialist Nia. Okay, Nia is here. Uh, Next up is Dolrum is playing himself. Uh, Galen? Uh, Jensen. You're Jensen, gotcha. Uh, Yamato, we're looking at that. I don't see a problem with that. Um, I'll whip up a sheet and... For the moment, just do roll two d twenty in Discord, and we'll we'll run that that way for now. Okay, and, and uh, I just throw up a sheet for them, and I can uh, start uh, filling that out in between uh, in between rolls. Okay, and Master Chief Ember. Um, I mean, I I feel like if I. Uh... If I take a supporting character, it's gonna, you know, overshadow others. Okay. So I'm I'm okay with sitting out of this scene. Okay. Um, and I think because this is going to be a fairly long scene and moving into the second act, let's take a quick break. That way we can get 
uh, the, that support character up and running. So we'll be back yeah. at um, right on the hour. So 10 minutes, folks. Alrighty. Okay. I'll uh, go quick use the bathroom and one.
Okay, folks. Oh, did we... Uh... Sorry? Did we lose uh, Ember? Uh, yes, Ember had to go and uh, run an errand with a friend. Hopefully she will be back this this af- or f- at some point before the evening is over, but if not, yeah, social priorities come before games at, at times. Yeah, and I'll go find search Exonoma for a joined uh, symbiont name. Okie dokie. Since I... Okay, so introducing the recently created character of uh, Renis or Hennis Rulon of the Judge Advocate Office. We will make her token appear shortly. Anyways, okay, so what you uh, what you uh, run into, uh, Commander Dalrum, is a scene of an obvious explosion. Um, fairly high powered. It has de- it has damaged a significant portion of the um, area around where the Klingons uh, would be working, so the office space. Um, the ambassador um, Klathoff has been grievously wounded and is currently being hauled out on a stretcher by two med uh, students. Okay. Um, ah. Lohost, the uh, female guard, is being has less severe injuries and is able to make it out on her own power, but is also being escorted up to sick bay. Uh, Ek, uh, eh. Eklek, the other Klingon warrior bodyguard, storms up to you. You let them! You le- you are responsible for this, Commander! You let those Romulan bastards onto this station. You set them up within spitting distance of our embassy, and this is what has happened! Do you have any proof that it was the Romulans? Not yet, but I will find it. Therefore, they will be considered innocent until proven guilty. This is a Federation station. We're following Federation rules. You are just as much of a suspect as any of them. As any of them are. How dare you believe that I had anything to do with the assault of... Now, you can go get checked out by our medical... You are okay. Or you can go with security because you are getting in my way of an investigation. He takes a few seconds while his brain that typically um, deals with, you know, combat has to readjust to this sort of meh thinking. Fine. I will go and my priority is to the ambassador. Go get yourself checked out. Let us do a preliminary investigation. Let's see if we can figure out what caused this and we will go from there. Mm. If you have any questions, you can direct them at me I can't guarantee I'll be listening at the moment. Fine. As he leaves... Also, I, I, out of character, when, when I originally picked her name from uh, Exonoma, I, I, went, I went for the unjoins. I, 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 so for when I, dis- when I did the dice roll and decided to make her joined, uh, I, went to, I, I went back there to get a new name, which will now become her surname. All right. So um, I went with yeah. me back. Uh, pl- uh, please wait until the scene sort of comes to a close before ju- jumping in with uh, out-of-character comments, please. Uh, right, sorry. That's all right. Okay, so um, the captain, or the Elk Eklek, wanders past the Romulan embassy, where t- the two guards are maintaining a respectful distance, but can't help but just sort of sneer at them. Um the Romulan ambassador is actually, if she is, she appears distressed by what has happened, but, and is staying within her quarter, or staying within the embassy under the guise, uh, or under the watch of the older Romulan. Okay, do that, save that. Hmm. So Dolrum turns to the team that's appeared. All right. Let's figure out what caused this. All right. Um, so I will... Oh, bother that. Okay, because of... 
Um, so if someone could take control of Dura real quick, and let's do an extended task to figure out what happened here. Or sure, the commander, can... yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think since, since the commander's kind of already here, he can be in charge of it. Yeah. Okay, um, so this could be an insight security, um, or reason security, whichever one you think is right. Um, They're the I will same write, weight value. I will <laughs> write things out momentarily. Okay, so this is going to be an extended task to figure out what happened. This will be a, a work track of 15. A difficulty of two. A magnitude of two, just because it's a fairly quick thing. Actually, work track should probably be shorter than now that I'm thinking about it. And there will be a resistance of three. Because there's a Work track 10, difficulty 2, magnitude 2, resistance 3. Yep. Alrighty. Um, looking through any of my focuses, would any of them apply? Um, let me see what focuses you have. Starbase protocol, hand-to-hand -hand combat, hand phasers, tactical systems, survival, composure. Hand phasers might work in this instance. Okay. Insights. Um, have Nia assist somehow if I can. I, I love yeah. the assist. Nia can certainly um, assist. So can Jensen. Jensen has sabotage. This would be right up his alley. Um, I kind of want to just run a tricorder scan of the computer and see if maybe there is any kind of power surges. Uh, that. Yeah, power surges. Uh, any viruses okay. that might have been implanted. Okay, that's good places to start. I'm also going to give you a point of threat so Excellent. that my bold security comes into play. Works for me. Definitely is going to need to come into play. Okay, let's see here. Um, firewalls as a focus? Firewalls could work as a focus, sure. Okay. Okay, so I that... just got us two momentum. Now it is two momentum. Nothing I'm because afraid from Nia. Difficulty of two? Yep. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's two momentum. Okay. Okay, so um, that is enough. Feel free to wor roll your work. It's one plus discipline, it right? Is... I think it's two plus discipline. Yep, two plus for discipline for the first. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Um, point of momentum to re roll those five zeros. That, that... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd recommend it. But by just, all means, yeah. Just wow. That's better, except there's three resistance. So you make one. Uh, we can. That's still five. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's five. So that's only two so far on the work track. I don't have anything that will help. We could yeah. shave off some of the resistance, but mm -hmm. we won't have enough for breakthrough. Mm. Wait, is the momentum spend to do piercing? Is that repeatable or just one? It's one momentum for two piercing. Right. I'm just saying, is like, is it a repeatable spend or is it just one only? It's repeatable. Um, we've all done it repeatable. Um, I'm okay with spending two momentum so we can at least get a breakthrough. We'd have to spend two momentum anyway to get a breakthrough, so sure. Yeah, That's we might as well. Breakthrough. Okay, so you make a break... You make one breakthrough. Um, I should br quickly update uh, Hennis's talent, or token here. Okay, so the... Uh, so you make one breakthrough. Uh, you, Judging from the energy signatures... Uh, this is indeed a... Dis uh, looks like someone has placed a hand weapon here. Placed it, uh, disabled all safeties. And set it to overload. Mm. Do we have any... Is there any remnant of the handheld device? Um, with the amount of 
debris in the area and the Klingon general. Uh, you are, um, let's say that would be the final breakthrough that you'll need to solve the work track. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, I'll radio, or I'll radio, I will uh, hit my communicator down to Galen in sickbay. Galen's not here, man. Galen is gone. Galen hit, Galen jumped on the ship. However, uh, you oh, do speak right. to one of his med students. Yeah, um, Dorum uh, de Medbay. Uh, Katak here, Commander. Katak, we're finding uh, remnants and residual energies of some sort of handheld weapon disruptor or phaser. When looking over the Klingons, do a scan to see if uh, there's any uh, focus areas on them. I want to rule them out as a suspect, but we need to do the scans in order to do so. Hi, Captain. I will I will see it done. Thank you, sir. Okay. So I believe the work track is an, half done. Yep, yeah, the work track is half done, and the difficulty has been reduced by one, and now the magnitude is also reduced by one. So it's so, a difficulty one. Yeah. Uh, so feel free to roll another. So if you're searching for something, I now that you know what you're looking for, this could also be an insight plus security or insight plus engineering. Uh, I will give you another point of threat. <laughs> yeah, that bold talent. Yeah. Do have Neo assist with insight engineering? Okay. Oops. Oh no, he doesn't have a focus in this task. Oh wait, no. I I, I can do an I I can do an insight to security roll just to uh, check. Can... I think now I think we can still only have one person assist on external yeah. tasks. Yeah. It, okay. You know, yeah. Assisted the first time. Just got it. Yeah. Okay. Um. And what, that's three, three momentum. momentum? That would be, yes, three momentum. Correct. Sweet. I like that better. Mm-hmm, that's pretty good. That is, the resistance is still three. But, so... I will spend one momentum for uh, piercing. That'll mean that there's still one resistance. Still mm-hmm. have five war track beat, magnitude yep. beat. That would do the trick. Um, you discover roughly... Uh, after doing some scans with the Klingon's weaponry and comparing it to the energy signatures, it's not a Klingon disruptor, nor is it a Federation hand phaser. Uh, you do, uh, finding a few um, pieces of the device left that is scattered to the corners, as well as a couple scans from an engineering tricorder, indicate that this is indeed a Romulan disruptor. Ah, <sighs> Dolrum will take a big sigh. I guess I gotta go. Questions? Hmm. What'd you find, Commander? Well, Jensen... Actually, I could use your expertise. So, energy blast, detonated, high um, hand-held device... Energy signatures and what little debris we were found seem to be tracing back to the Romulans. I personally don't want to think that the Romulans are responsible. Unfortunately, this would be pointed right at them, but that also makes it so that it they are the obvious target. Yeah, they're not that sloppy. You probably want to look at the Ferengi. That's exactly what I was thinking. Although, the Ferengi didn't come to mind. We'll cross that bridge here. But other than the Klingons here, the Romulans here, even the Frankie, although we will definitely question them, who else has to gain with the Klingons being injured? Federation. You injure the Klingons, they make a claim against the Romulans. You push off the Romulans from the station. Information is no longer shared with them. So, Jensen, the Federation has come to the aid of the of the Klingons. On multiple occasions, yes, we've had bumpy relations in the past, but I like to think that the Federation holds higher ideals than that. What's that organization called? Right, Section 31. Section 31 has been disbanded. Mm Mm-hmm. Still have Starfleet intelligence, don't you? You have an intelligence 
intelligence service as well. Everybody has intelligence services. Yeah, even the Breen have a chance to gain something from this. You piss off the Romulans, you make the Confederacy angry with a Typhon pact. We start putting pressure on you. It's a win-win-win for everyone, really. But honestly, the Breen would most likely go out and attack directly. The Romulans would not allow evidence to be left. And less, let alone letting the Klingons live. Sorry, there are better ways to kill you than um, overcharge this raptor. I tend to agree. I was an investigator and chief of uh, station security. I am asking for input, but I, I, I'm on, along the same lines of thinking. Um, I know the ambas- ambassador Obek and the uh, Klathov had history, so that also is a uh, place that we can follow. Speaking of Odok, he comes in, takes a big sniff, and just laughs, laughs, laughs. Ah! What did happen here? Did Klathov fart? No, Odok, there was an attack. Oh. I'm actually... Oh, Doc, I'm surprised that you know his odor. You've been that far up inside of him before? Clathoff and I have a history. Apparently an intimate one. Dolrum's keeping a straight face. <laughs> oh, Doc, I've just... tried to. <laughs> oh, Doc just growls a bit and then laughs at stupid laugh that he seems to do a lot. Well, if he's proven himself incompetent enough to be attacked within six hours of assuming his post, uh, such an unworthy person. They should have shipped him off with the rest of Jim Pock's traitors, but no. Klingon intelligence couldn't find enough dirt on him. I say they weren't digging enough. Whatever. Oh, Doc? Yes? considering this was an attack and you have history with the ambassador who's currently in critical condition down in the sick bay I have to ask where you you have been the last 12 hours uh, check your logs I was in my quarters for the last 8 and then I stumbled around for a bit having some drinks at the uh, Breen or not the Breen the uh, Bolian's place then I figured I'd go pay the those Ferengis a visit. Just see what they had in stock. You know, I can sense a I can sense a bargain. I think they're gonna do well here. Giving Clath off a wide berth. Makes sense, but considering that you guys have you two have history, it does put you up pretty high on the suspect list. He shrugs. Eh, do what you want. I'm sh- The truth, or your, the truth will vindicate me, I'm certain. And he sits down in the chair, not even, ca- not even caring that most of it has, is debris covered and part of it's missing. Noted, Ambassador. Now, Ambassador, this is an active crime scene. I am going to have to ask you to go back to your quarters. I came down all this way for nothing. Fine. If you would like, I could have Robbie site to site transport you. Nah. I may be blind, but I'm not helpless. Getting around the station only by foot increases my familiarity with it. And with that, he'll dawdle off. I like him. He's interesting. Aren't all Klingons pretty interesting? (laughs) Non-humans are interesting. (laughs) Well, Jensen, technically you are non-human. No, I'm superior. Uh Augments have been pretty much characterized as a different human. I am not human. It doesn't define us. It's just a characteristic. Uh, 
You can talk to me after you've been forced off your home. How about that? In the meantime, I'm going to pay a little visit to the Romulan ambassador. Feel free to talk to the Ferengi. I was going to go take care, uh, have a little chat with the Romulans myself. Good. Okay. You will talk with them. They'll say nothing. They'll talk with me, and they'll talk with me. We'll see. Okay, so we're off to we're off to see the Romulans, the wonderful Romulans of Cerberus. Um, before we do that, yes. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to have Nia try and mess with Jensen. Okay. Let's do a mess uh, with Jensen. Uh, as we're walking out of the Klingon embassy, or opens, I want to try and just subtly at the console. A, a small force field just at the height where he hits his head off of the force field. Oh! Watch your head! Okay, that will be a daring plus engineering. Hello? Let's say difficulty. There you go. Two. All right, so I just heard Nia wants to mess with me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Difficulty two for daring plus engineering. Yeah, that's me. Fine. No, no me. Nia. Oh, okay. What's Nia trying to do? Watch uh, your head. A small force field at the door, just enough so he that Jensen kind of bonks his head off of it. As I said, watch your head. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Or compute. Would computers work here? I would say so. Sure. Okay. Um. I'll take a momentum for a third die. Okay. You're, you know you're being. Because I want this to happen. <laughs> okay. First dodge balls. Now force fields. Yeah. We're in the mirror universe. I know it. Oh. <laughs> okay. And Thank you. He you. banged my head. Uh, so, oh um, what happens is just as Jensen's about to leave the. Uh, as Jensen's about to leave the Klingon uh, doorway, Rami quickly appears just off to the side and says. A specialist Nia, using the for, using the force fields for personal enjoyment is not what their intended use is. I have logged your use with the security division. <laughs> and you know he just kind of stands. <sighs> Apparently, Jesus hologram. Look to Rami. Uh, Jess is going to look to Rami and then look back to Nia. And he's just going to look at you for a second, kind of give a little laugh to himself and walk out. Dorum sighs. Right. Being in charge is still new to me. I like being in charge of security, not an entire station. Turns around and walks over to the Romulans. <laughs> ah, yeah, and uh, Ennis is probably going to. Well, there, it, she's going to ta- get uh, witness statements. Uh, well, like talk talk to the crowd, see see what anyone else might have seen. Yeah, uh, the embassy um, deck is not very uh, trafficked at the moment, um, due to the heightened nature of the. Tension. Ah, there are uh, ah, ser- yeah. there are so, several. So probably not. Yeah. There are some yeah, security. Maybe... Uh, there are several yeah. security people that are posted. Um, most of them just report that there was a, a high pitched whine, some shouts in Klingon, and then a fairly decent sized explosion. Ah. Okay. Before we walk into the Romulan embassy, mm-hmm. I'm just going to stop Dolrim like a few feet away. Mm-hmm. I was like, I want to try something. You, uh. You, you have plenty of these, right? And I'm just going to pull off his comm badge. I was like, I'm going to leave it on. All right. And I'll tap it and put it in my pocket. And I'll head into the uh, Romulan embassy. All right. 
Okay. Now, um, what he has just... I, I need to do a full draft of these rules. I wasn't thinking that we'd have a JAG officer so quickly. Otherwise, I would have drafted these sooner. Um, but what, whether or not Hennis wishes to object is that this would count as a covert monitoring of an embassy, which oh, yeah. technically goes against Federation val, uh, goes against Federation uh, rules. Let's say, whether or not um, Ebac wishes to say anything, well, that's up to her. Anyway, yeah, I think at, at the moment she, at the moment she's wanting to get to the bottom of this and figure out just what's going on. She can. Uh, deal with uh, breaches of values and the protocol another time. All right. Cool. It's one of those JAG officers, the fun kind. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the practical kind. Okay, so you... Uh, Michael Jensen is... So, let's see. You are... Ah, let me center for stream. There we go. So, it's currently just Jensen. These other ones are not... Here yet. Okay, Michael Jensen, you walk through the door and are immediately blockaded by Cujo and Vrovreen, um, who are attempting to stare down someone who has about as much experience staring down people as they do. I just look them up and down and just smirk, and it's like, not Federation, I'm here to talk to the ambassador. Mm. Allies, remember? Hanessa is... Uh, Hanessa spins around in her chair. Uh, that is okay. Please, come on in. Uh, while while you're wandering in, you do notice that Levesque is going up and down the Romulan... Uh, 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 the Romulan embassy with a uh, security tricorder of his own. Uh, Jensen's going to smile, and as he watches the door close, he'll take a step forward. And just put his hand up, uh, finger up to his lips, and just go shh. And he's going to point to his pocket where the comm badge is at. He was like, so I have some information about the Klingon incident? I'd be very interested to hear it. Um, as I'm sure uh, you can tell your commander and captain and anyone else involved that the Romulans deny uh, any sort of involvement in the tragic explosion and wish the ambassador a speedy recovery. Oh, I fully believe the Romulans had nothing to do with it, and I'm going to make my way towards Levesque, and just again, point to it. Like, although they did find something interesting, and I believe that you have no cause for any type of concern, but a Romulan disruptor was overloaded. Do you still have possession of all your weapons? Levesque uh, this brings uh, the guards, Levesque and Levesque, to pause. Uh, each one pats. Uh, sir, I've... To my knowledge, we have... We haven't... Ah, our armories have not reported a breach. And all of our per personal armaments are still present. He points to his hip, and Cujo, Vrovreen, obviously bring out theirs, and... Uh, Hinesa just sort of subtly nods to a compartment uh, to the side of the desk. I'll move over to the side and look at the compartment. Uh, uh, give uh, Hinesa quickly taps in a uh, key code. The compartment pops open and out pop two Romulan disruptor pistols. Um, tell me, do you... Does the Romulan still uh, use an inverse charge on their weapons? Of course. Uh, we've... To the best of my knowledge, I'm not a technology person, but the inverse charge has been standard for Romulan disruptors for the last 30 years. Figured as much. Well, Ambassador, I just want to let you know, in spirit of cooperation between the Breen Confederacy and the Romulan Empire, that we will always have your back. Of course. Despite our friendly overtures with the Federation, they weren't the ones that helped us after uh, the Hobus explosion. 
That is true. Well, since everything appears to be in order, I believe you are going to be expecting a visit from the commander soon. I just wanted to give you all a bit of a heads up, and it looks like you guys haven't <laughs> been caught with anything. Not or, that I would expect the Robins to be. Nor would we. That This would be the work of Tal Shiar, and I abhor their presence. Of course, they've also gone downhill ever since uh, Sela's death. Not that I know such things. Well, then. I'll leave you all to it. And uh, Jensen will walk out. Very well. And will give back his com- uh, Dolan's combat. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I feel like we can Romulans. Okay. So, uh, so you're you guys are heading in now? I'll head in. Okay. Anyone else joining the commander? Mm. Mm, um I don't think, I'll, I'll... I think sending in a JAG officer would probably be a bad idea. That's just me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I probably probably a good idea if uh, she stays out and he keeps an eye out. And she might uh, look into other things, like if it's a wrong. Uh, maybe looking if if it's not a weapon from the embassy, maybe look into like arms smuggling or something like that. Okay, okay. that's cool. Okay. Um, so, in walk Commander Dolrum and Specialist Nia, as well as mm-hmm. a couple token security officers. Uh, Ambassador Hinesa stands up and does a quick head nod, and she gestures for her guards to stand at ease. Commander Dolrum, I do. welcome to our embassy. I assume that you are here to ask us questions about what's that ruckus next door? Uh, indeed, but first I wanted to make sure that you guys were all right in here. That was a pretty big bang. I appreciate that. Aside from a couple hastily hung de- wall decorations, she gestures to one that has fallen off of the uh, current uh, Romulan Empire Praetor. We are doing pretty well. And Levesque here is doing a wonderful job scanning for any potential surprises that the Klingons have left behind. Yes, it's most strange what happened. We're trying to kind of piece everything together. I was hoping that you'd be willing to help us. Uh, I believe we can, and if I'm reading chat right, it looks like Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett has just arrived. Oh. That would indeed be the case. Uh... Hello! Hello, hello. Okay, so... Uh, sorry to bring the episode to a quick halt. We need to figure out where your character would be. Uh, so, would your character be better off... Do you believe that he would be better off in assisting tracking down a Borg uh, signature on a nearby planet that is just about to break the warp barrier? Or would he like to stay behind in a political... Uh, or an explosive, literally, political situation? Oh, jeez. Politics sounds like... A what my mom was doing and I don't know that Marcus would be too crazy on that so I I'm have also been... okay with this considering that every other member of the senior staff is currently on that ship yes <laughs> yeah I mean I, technically it was a well it, it, it's political in the sense that the Klingon and Romulan delegations have arrived and the Klingon embassy was just hit by an explosion yeah. oh I have I have got some archives to watch. Suffice to say, uh, I'll take the Borg, please. <laughs> Very well. Uh, we'll cut to that scene just after this one. Uh, Sounds good. And I'm alone Thanks. again. Um, I would um, actually like to utilize Neo's join talent as we go in here. Sure. And, and to what call... situation? Um, on the memories of. Let's see here, because I had to pull up random name generators. Just Julian, 
Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, just be as you pull up random name generators, just be sure to list hosts in his bio so we don't so yeah. other people picking him up don't lose track. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do a uh, call upon the memories of one Dolian Nia, who is a Trill spy. Okay. Take a deception focus and kind of just read these Romulans as the conversation goes on to see if anything's up. Understandable. Okay. Um, so after the scene's over, I'll have your rolls and see if you picked anything up. All right. Okay. Uh, Commander Dolrum. Uh. Ambassador, uh, wanted to make sure that you were all right and get your input on some of our findings. Captain, as I'm sure you are aware, the... And she winks a little bit. This is... This may look bad on the Romulans, but I have to state my gov- both my personal and my government's official position that we have had nothing to do with this attempted assassination and the Romulan Empire wishes the Klingons ambassador a quick return to health thank you for the official statement honestly ambassador I didn't expect that it was the Romulans well that's I hope you can convince the Klingons of that I fear they may retaliate we're putting out fires as we can but I wanted to go over some with with you some of the findings that we've found so far and see if we can get your input because other than the obviousness of the Klingons wanting to frame you guys so that they can start a war which we all know that doesn't end well for anybody just it's it's messy and we don't want to start we don't want to start a war today especially here agreed as both of our ships are currently located inside your station's uh, space dock area, that would be very expensive, as the Ferengi would put it. But I will, in the um, in the presence of full disclosure, as we are doing our best to be, it is looking like, based on the energy signatures found in the embassy, as well as the debris that... Um, as we were searching the embassy that it was a Romulan disruptor that uh, set to overload that caused the explosion. Uh, she puts on a bit of a shocked face but she isn't fooling anyone. She obviously fig- found that out, information out a little bit earlier. I'm aware. I am... Uh, this is definitely a n- news against the... F- ah. This is definitely looks bad on us, but once again, I must state our... Uh, oh, uh, I, yes. you don't have to repeat it. I yes. I fully agree. If if it would if it will make you uh, if it will make you more comfortable, I'll have my seneschal send over a complete rundown of our, our of our armory stock just to confirm that nothing has been missing. I would gr- greatly appreciate that, Ambassador. Although the question I more want to ask is, other than the Klingons. Who would want to frame the Romulan? She shrugs. As, uh, out this far? The Klingons would be the be- the most obvious op- option. The Ferengi would stand very... L- the f- Between you and me, Captain, we had to pay a significant fund uh, to the uh, Ferengi just to have them keep the Klingons on a leash during our long travel here. It's possible that... But we paid that... We paid that deal and we solved that. Ah, we settled that deal. As I doubt that the Ferengi would want to harm us unless they could see some way of profiting from this, but to me that doesn't seem like a very profitable venture this early on in their attempts to ply their trade ships through those hubs I will be um, in conversations I've had with the Frankie and the point that I was with them when the explosion what happened and they had been in the um, uh, bar for a good time prior to it 
it doesn't seem like they would be likely suspects. Well, Commander, I'm afraid that I will offer whatever assistance I can, but if you have a rogue bomber on the station, I would suggest that you find him or her as quickly as possible. That's the goal. I do have a question for you. Yes. Since I, even though I am of security knowledge, am not Romulan, obviously, as I point to my reptilian (laughs) self, nor have I ever used Romulan weapon. So, as all of you in this room are more experts at this than I am, do you know how long it takes for a Romulan disruptor to overload? Because that will give us the time window of when we need to look for a suspect. Uh, Cujo and Vrovreen. Uh, Cujo, ah, Cujo will speak up. Once placed in an overload, a uh, Mark III uh, disruptor pistol takes roughly, it could take anywhere from 30 seconds to an hour, depending on how you decide to remove the safeties. It's, and he looks around. As much as I hate to make your job harder, Commander, it's possible it was a remote detonation. The possibility has also come through my mind. Again, I am not familiar with Romulan technology. It's, I have had dealings with the Romulans just because my previous starbase was relatively close to their space. But I don't, for, to your, your space, but I don't know a whole lot. I can't confirm nor deny that this is a, th- a Series 3 disruptor because I've never known what the other series are. If I uh, I pull up the, with the remnants that we have, would you guys be able to identify that it is, a, in fact, a Mark III? Of course. Uh, I walk over to the Ambassador desk. Ambassador, may I borrow your desk for a moment? Uh, she, she will stand up away and uh, Levesque just sort of moves in to guard her a little bit I promise Levesque I'm not going to do anything but pull up the hologram and I tap a few buttons uh, to pull up the hologram of the remnants of this, the disruptor this is what we found as remnants of what we think is the disruptor again it's the only thing that we would know um it was embedded in the walls some in the floor possibly in the klingons i I couldn't tell you um but this is what we were able to extract from the embassy across the way Uh, kujo takes a couple steps forward with your permission ambassador Uh, and i look back to the ambassador yep she nods kujo will sort of side up to you and do some tappiness along the uh, Elkar screen. Molecular... The, the molecular makeup of the remnants of the uh, lenses do appear to coincide with that of a Mark III or Series three. Series 2's, as you can see, Series 2 used a uh, less refined process. No, the purity is far more the, the purity is far higher than what one would expect from a Series 2. No, Commander, Ambassador, this would be a modern Romulan weapon. Is there any way to indicate maybe like when it was made? Um, like, do you guys put serial numbers on your weapons? Again, I'm not looking for the inner details of how you construct your weapons, but anything that we can trace this weapon so that we can find out who did this and no one gets blamed. Cujo, uh, Specialist Nia would obviously would notice a quick pause on Cujo, Cujo's face. I'm afraid that in explosions such as this, Romulan disruptors are designed to have their identifying information erased um and it definitely makes sense as a tactical standpoint and i can appreciate that that is actually in the design that's remarkable
Commander, if... Uh, at this point, Livek will step in. Commander, if there is nothing else, uh, the Ambassador has had a long day, and I'm sure she would appreciate a return to her quarters. On one condition, Levesque? Yes, Commander. If this is something that they want to start a dispute about, let uh, one of our security teams do a uh, deep dive into the quarters just to make sure that there isn't anything that's not supposed to be there. I don't want to have to have another ambassador in my sick bay. Understood, Captain. Understood, Commander. I will. And I will. I suspect uh, that you, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, and I suspect you would do the same thing going through the quarters as soon as you get there, but it will definitely put my mind at a little bit more ease that uh, it'll be double checked. Of course, Captain, or Commander. I'm. You're. You may send whichever teams you wish. I uh, tap my com badge. Uh, Dolrum to security base. Can we send a team to look through the Romulan ambassador's quarters to make sure that there's nothing that's not supposed to be there? Yes, sir. I will dispatch a team immediately. Thank you. Okay. And ambassador, if you suspect anything. Of course. I want I want this starbase to run smoothly, but I also want it to be a place where we can form new friendships. I look forward to this. Maybe fixing some old ones. Time will And time. I bow I bow. Have a great evening. You as well. And I'll walk out. Mm-hmm. All right. On, okay. On. Um before we switch scenes, yes. uh, after they leave the after uh Dolrum and Nia leave the embassy. Uh, Hennis will come up to them and say, "There is an angle we haven't considered. This might not be an organiz. There might not be an organization at work. I don't know. What, I I've had a few investigations somewhat like this before, but it could be. Uh, it could be that." Rather than an entire uh, than the Klingons wanting to stir up trouble with the Romulans or any, any organization trying to stirring up trouble, it could be someone who ha- it could just be one individual with a grudge against the Klingons for something, and they decide uh, and in acquisition of materials they just went with whoever would uh, they went to, with whatever would uh, allow for a convenient patsy. I would agree with that. Um, why don't you go into go down to security and start pulling and seeing if any there's any cross-reference to why there would be a grudge on any one person. I'm going to go uh, up to Ops and start pulling Rami to see if we can pull specifics on any of like the camera angles as well as any energy spikes that have come through during that hour window. They said anywhere between 30 seconds and an hour um, beforehand, the energy had to have been building. So if it built gradually over time, we know that it was staged there, and we have to figure out who staged the um, the disruptor. If there was a sudden energy spike, it was most likely transported in. Right. So I'll get right on it. You head down oh, to security, okay. and I will head towards ops. Yes, sir. Would I make that roll now to see if absolutely. I picked up on anything? Go for yeah. it. Absolutely. I'm going to set this as a difficulty of three. Okay. Moment. It's probably con? Um, security, I would say. Okay. That's not great, but it's worth a shot. Um spend the two momentum and give you a threat to give you two extra dice? I don't believe you can spend momentum and threat at the same time. We well, can. Huh? Yes, you can. Oh, you can? Oh, oh my apologies. Mm-hmm. I've been I must have misread something at some point. I apologize. Okay. Oh, it's okay. No worries. Yeah, well, more threat for me. That is still not enough. 
Yeah. All right. All right. As far as you can tell, there everything was above board for the entire discussion. The Romulans were not hiding anything in particular. All right. Uh, as we kind of walk out, you kind of see him. Almost looks like he stumbles for a bit, and he's kind of holding his head. They didn't seem to be lying, at least. That's good to hear. Specialist, since you have an engineering background, let's have you explore the different the spike in energy um, with me as we uh, do some investigation on our scanners. Of course. All right. Okay, scene change. We are now in the orbit of Iban. So... With a slight change of uh, crew roster, uh, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett has been is the science officer instead of I- Ilya. All right. Okay, so you guys come into order. And let's bring the lunette back. Okay, uh, so where? How would you like to approach this, Captain? Hmm. I don't necessarily want to beam down to the planet and be like. Hi, you're part of the universe now. Have they? We just show up out of nowhere. No. It'll be weird. Yeah. They haven't launched yet. Although the radio waves you guys are picking up, even as you enter the system, is one of celebration. And then is that coming from the interplexing beacon, or no? Um, the so you're picking up a, di- a bunch of different se- signals here. The first is that from the interplexing beacon, which is coming from a research dome from the moon. Now, why okay. is it that you guys don't see my pings when I do that? I should have that enabled, right? I'll figure that out eventually. Um, anyways, from the moon, there's the there's the small dome where the interplexing beacon is coming from, but a lot of the traffic is media, so radio waves, television signals that sort of stuff uh, that is okay. coming from the both the planetary surface and from the city on the moon apparently this is some time coming um, the planet has long been in two separate uh, economic blocks um, it's um, Sullivan Barnett knows this from his uh, studies of the system they are the uh, Celatine Alliance and the Casaval Empire um, both okay. of which are finally putting together, putting aside their differences to reach for the stars. And I shall just put that in chat so that you guys can see it. Okay. Useful. Mm-hmm. Mud will turn around. May I make a suggestion, Captain? By all means, Zensen. Why don't we put ourselves in the upper atmosphere? Uh, of the magnetic north of either this planet or that's a point our sensors there. It keeps us hidden from them as well as we can monitor everything. Now there the... there are there are several uh, different planets here and I'll just refresh uh, Sullivan Barnett here because um, he would know a lot about the planets already. Uh, there are five planets in the system. Um, the first one is a class B so similar to Mercury. Uh, the second is Class F, which is fairly mineral-rich, but not really capable of supporting life. Third is the Class M planet that you're that all the fuss is about. Uh, four is a Class K, so a Mars-type planet, and the class and the final one is a Class S, which is a Saturn-sized gas giant. Okay. And they, uh, just to fill myself in on what my character would know, um, I don't know a few specific questions. Sure. So, the uh, the species in question, uh, there's on their world, and what I presume is the moon of their world. Mm-hmm. Um, 
that they are roughly in a position to uh, like they are pre-warp as I understand it, but are prepare either prepare. Well, they've got they've obviously got an interplexing beacon, which is bad news. Are they preparing to launch other spacecraft of sorts, or are they approaching the warp barrier? They are indeed. That's what prompted the speedy response. Is they have their own Phoenix ship that is scheduled to launch in oh about. I'd say about three hours by now. Oh boy. And um, otherwise, well, obviously they're just starting in terms of warp technology. Mm-hmm. They in inter- turn, like, how sophisticated would their sensor systems be? They have. Or how come? Um, so uh, Master Chief Ember sent out a probe to just gather a bit preliminary information. They do have the area around the um, Ibari, or Iban, I should say, uh, which is the name of the planet, Iban, uh, fairly locked down with all sorts of uh, low-powered sensor satellites. Um, there, are, There's a decent amount of sublight craft that is floating around the system. Um, nothing, obviously, as powerful as Federation technology yet, but it would be very difficult to approach the planet in a stealthy manner. So, let's see. All of that said, it looks like within their lunar perimeter, uh, any sort of smooth approach would be a bit hazardous. Um, I'm going to chew on this for just a moment, and if the captain has any requests for me, then I'll be ready to do so, but... Okay. Um, which of the planets in the system is, like, furthest away from the one we're looking at now? Ah. Um, so you're... Th- uh, in terms of just lunar distance, it would be the gas giant. Um, okay, and... Is, um... Let's just say that this planet is... The, let's just say that Iban, the Class M, is at 12 o'clock on a clock. Um, okay. The Class S planet would be around 7 o'clock. And okay. the furthest orbit, so... Um, I should also mention, <laughs> in case it matters, that there is an abnormally large asteroid field slash Oort cloud at the, rain, at the edge of the system. Okay. Um, so could we get from the gas giant to, say, this one we're at now fairly quickly if we were on full impulse power, or...? Yeah, so full impulse, I don't think they've ever given proper times within the system. So full mm-hmm. impulse, you can pro- I estimate that you can get to Pluto from, from Earth to Pluto in about four hours. So from the gas okay. giant to this planet, probably about two. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Ensign Mud, take us to... And you said it was the Class S? That yeah. was the farthest? Class S, yes. Uh, position us on the magnetic north pole of the planet. Let's... Let's wait until this ship launches before we make any kind of communication. Understood and agreed with, Captain. While this is all happening, Galen's going to be Robotic. Roboting! Galen just went robotic. Yeah. My... No? No. Uh, getting better? Uh, you, you... Uh, yeah, you... Yeah, yeah, he'll come back. Okay. Needed to remodulate the mobile emitter there. Yeah. <laughs> How about now? That's uh, speak you're clear story. at least right now. Uh, Dalen, Galen is going to he's going to pull out feathers okay I heard you're going to pull out feathers okay one second oh, poor Galen this okay fun. <laughs> all right so you're going to pull the ship into uh, pull okay Rastro. hello oh, hello again better now yep uh, so far Okay, good. Um, Galen's going to be pouring over information, any transmissions, video transmissions of the species. Okay. Uh, so the species appears. Um, I have a picture of them somewhere. I can show you. 
where did I put their character sheet? Um, so they are a humanoid species. Um, they are... Oh, that's right. That's because I just put their token art in here. Uh, so this is a picture of one of them. Um, pinkish skin, slightly domed head, not a lot of body hair to speak of, and overly large size ears. Uh, um, um, Galen's going to like go through multiple, multiple programs of any visual looks of them, try and get like an idea of how they all look from all different angles. Um, and then he's going to upload the parameters into his program. Um, same with their language. He's going to run that through the translation matrix. Uh, you've had plenty of time to... Um, because this species has been sending out radio waves for as long as this Starfleet has been operating in this area, uh, the uh, universal translator is already primed. Uh, so basically what you're understanding is that these, uh, the Silatine Alliance is... a a fairly, uh, it's not a militaristic n regime, but it is sort of how the United States governs. So there's a lot of separate states that are all come together for a centralized union yeah. that still govern themselves as individual states. Precisely. Whereas the, uh, the Casaval uh, Empire is, if whatever territory they own, they rule. Okay. So, yeah. So. Um, um, another thing I'm going to do, too, is, is go over the information of uh, culture, customs, uh, how they interact with individuals. Basically, I'm going to watch a bunch of uh, uh, soap operas and see how they interact. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Very well. Uh, Galen is now well-versed on over-dramatized... Uh, Ibani cultures. <laughs> Are there any villains with eye patches in the soap operas? They don't. Um, however, the bad guys all seem to have mustaches because that sounds like <laughs> fun. Now, um, apparently, white is a white is the color of the those who are of higher class. Um, it's the Empire is a class based society. Uh, so the the peak where uh, purest of white, and the further down the caste system they go, the darker colors that people wear. Um, let's see. Since this is like this in other cultures, um, are there any tell if there's a color that's like a significance for the meaning of like peace or well wishes or anything like that? Okay. Uh, roll me a... That would be an insight plus command. Uh, okay. Difficulty of... Let's say difficulty of two. Difficulty two, okay. Um, probably don't have a focus here. Yeah, yeah. insight command, difficulty two. That is success. two successes. Two successes. So, you, uh, yes, you understand that their sky, that the they seem to have accepted the sky color. So, their sky would be a slight. Uh, it's not quite the blue that we have in our Earth sky, but it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. So, a uh, a deep turquoise is typically seen as a very peaceful color, and has okay. been seen by. By their people as uh, where w one would wave a white flag in our society they would wave blue okay hmm. um, and for this mo um, because you probably would like some momentum a if I could have mud please roll me a diff difficulty zero test to park the ship so that it is properly hidden control con uh, control con and the ship can assist with engines con all right. Uh, I'll roll for the lunette. All right. Ooh. Okay. Wow. Just, just wow. 
Okay. Well, you gained one momentum out of the deal. Oh, boy. <laughs> Complications. <laughs> oh, my. I have an idea for the complication, but I will... I will store the complication for when I need it. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, the television sig uh, the uh, the television signals that are radiating out of the Earth or out of the planets uh, almost unanimously flip to a live coverage of the launch of the shuttle. And I will bring up a picture of said shuttle. I will move this to token layer. make it a bit bigger so that people can at least see it for the moment. So it is a ramshackle thing, to say the least. But it looks like it's well designed and structurally in structurally sound. Um, it's You guys can't really get a good glimpse of its what powers it, but it does look very similar to a warp drive. Okay. Oh, well, I guess we just sit and up goes. Okay. Yeah, and I, I can roll. I, I I'd be willing to roll an uh, insight engineering check to see what ha. I just basically study the design a bit more. Okay. Uh, that would be in insight engineering, and if you have focus on like starship design or something like that, that would work. Um, let's see. Let me check my focuses. Um, okay. I have. I have starship recognition. Would that work? I would say mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Insight. Engineering. What's the difficulty again? Uh, let's say difficulty of one, because it is a fairly primitive starship by your standards. Okay. I won't worry about extra D20s then. Applicable focus. Oh my. Oh, we're, okay. we're, complications. The complications are just come. The complications are just coming all over the place. <laughs> I think I'm going to take threat for this one. So I'll add Whew. that. Okay. Um, it, it is a fairly traditional um, matter-antimatter uh, engine. Uh, there appear to be three nacelles to deal with the basics of warp theory. The whole thing doesn't look like it will last longer than about six to seven minutes at warp speed but that's probably all it needs and at this point uh, all cameras are live as two astronauts um, are walking down the launch gantry in their traditional slow motion walk while dramatic music plays They reach. Uh, they get on board this the ship and begin to go through their launch sequence. And it is now T minus five minutes to launch. T minus three minutes. T minus one minute. And then the great. And um, they start counting down for some reason at eight instead of the traditional 10. <clears throat> the launch vehicle carrying the shuttle uh, immediately lifts um, for a species that has a sublight, uh, a great number of sublight speeds, or uh, sublight speed vessels. They appear to still need assistance in breaching the atmosphere. The ship leaves in a glorious fashion and begins its departure. 
these um, ah the ship uh, if you wish to do do you wish to do an interception on there uh, to see if you can't listen to what the pilots are saying um I feel like that might be idea okay uh, so that would be an intercept task, which is a uh, control plus security check. Yeah. And I will say that because of the primitiveness, it's only going to be difficulty of one. Um, since we have Ember with us, could you possibly yeah. roll for her, DM? I can roll for that. Let me pull up Ember's sheet. Uh, let's see here. Characters, Ember. Okay. That would be... Control plus security. Uh, doesn't look... Doesn't look like she has a focus for this, so that's alright. Uh, she... Oh, boy. Uh, she reports, well, the ship could still assist. Uh, the ship has comms plus um, security. Somewhere I can else. roll for it. Okay. It was a difficulty zero if the person doing the task didn't pass, then assist oh, yeah. don't work. That makes sense. The system can't help. I forgot that rule. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, well, darn. Uh, Sorry, guys. Ember reports that the uh, gases are of the... Uh, the gas in the Class S planet's environment is just causing too much havoc. We'll sure. just have to wait, sir. Uh, the ship successfully passes by its second, uh, by the Class K planet, which you now, um, thanks to Galen's research, now known as Holasti, and begins to set course right past the gas giant. All right, uh... Ensign Mud and set up some way to flash some kind of and I'll show him like maybe like a data pad with the information about that peaceful color for them on it let's go introduce a, spe a new species to the universe well they haven't broken light speed yet they're just at uh, powerful impulse speed oh yeah uh they jump to warp then. Yeah. <clears throat> you want to see if they actually go there. Mm -hmm. There is... As it gets closer, um, you have it on vid screen now, you see their uh, nacelles flash a very familiar blue color as the ship enters warp speed and breaks war reaches a rough estimate of 1.2 before... Uh, stopping at roughly just uh, it will stop just before reaching the asteroid field because holy cow no one wants to go through an asteroid field without a deflector screen yeah um, happens I'll relay those same instructions mm -hmm. <laughs> okay um, yeah okay so there's um <clears throat> Okay, so you send out a alert, or you send out a communication along their frequency? Um, I kind of more want to... Uh, yeah, that might be the safer option, rather than just pulling up right alongside them. <laughs> yeah. That's not yeah, let's surprising. Do that. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay. Um, you are about to send a hail in their general direction when a wideband burst in, uh, when a wideband uh, signal emanates from it. Um, you don't... They are reporting severe damage to one of their... Uh, one of their... Re to their reactor system. And their radiations... Uh, their radiation alert is... Um, spiking. Uh, they say that it is impo that it appears impossible for them to make it back safely 
Um, but however, the techno the technology that they have just proven today should propel the Abani species to the stars. And they wish to be memorialized as such. Did they mm. achieve the warp barrier? They did achieve it. They broke warp one they made warp one point two. Captain, they broke the warp barrier, that means we can assist. Yeah, uh Ensign, take us in. I see. some way to help them. Okay. Um I'm going to scan their uh, physiology. Okay. Uh, that would be insight plus medical, please. Medicine, please. Uh, biology, zoobiology, anatomy? Either or, yes. Uh, Excellent. That triggers my talent. Yep. Difficulty of one. I get three dice because of my talent. Ah, yes. <laughs> and all the momentum comes now. <laughs> yes, <it does. laughs> oh, that yeah. Three more momentum. Awesome. How much momentum did we just gain? Uh, three. three. All right. Um, yeah. So they are. There's a, a significant spike in uh, radiation. Their biology appears to be about as standard as a typical humanoid. Uh, so you suspect they will not serve. They will not survive long. Ah. They will be. They will survive for five minutes and can be fully regenerated, but anything longer, and they will suffer permanent radiation damage. Or oh, damage. I. W I look to the captain like uh, permission to transport a anesthesine over to their ship to put them to sleep before we transport them to ours. Uh, by all means, doctor. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, prep a little package to knock them out. <laughs> Gas bomb. Okay, cool. Um, very well. You will... You send over a package of gas and wait roughly uh, a minute before they... Um, however, there is a problem with that. Um, despite their radiation, they're still wearing full EVA suits. So whatever gas is... The... There. Oh damn! Yeah. Hmm. Well, it cost about two minutes before you made, or I'll say that cost about a minute before you made came to that realization. Um, if we beam them out, can we like knock them as they're being beamed out? Sorry, that's something we can do. Repeat that. Can we knock them out while they're being beamed in? Um, I don't, I don't believe that is a possibility. Like, like they get on the bio bed and I immediately just put them to sleep. Like, like you saw nothing. <laughs> uh, you can try. That's going to be a heck of a transporter test, but you can try. It would also seem rather hostile. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, having having I, a sh having a ship grab them in mid warp uh, <laughs> might also freak them out too. Uh, they're no longer at warp. I should say they, they are. Oh. They are. They are at station keeping. Yeah, I don't want to freak them out too much. Our that. only option is to grab them so they, they don't die. Yeah. Yeah. Time's ticking, uh, folks. That's your yeah, three minutes. Probably, yeah, what? I'd say, I'd say, just uh, go go the direct way, go in, uh, let them know that we're here to help, and then uh, beam them over. Uh, Can we be interaction so that they know that we're here to assist? Uh, you can certainly send that ahead. Yes. I thought we send that ahead so they don't get completely blindsided and send into shock. <laughs> well, if we do transport them, I can meet them in a transport room as one of their own species. Probably yes, they... not a good idea it's because they don't, I don't think they have transporter technology. At least a familiar face will mm -hmm. reduce the panic. Tick tock, folks, mm. two minutes. Oh boy, oh boy. All this debating time, Captain, make a decision. Yeah, yeah. Um, Warp, does the Prime Directive still technically apply-ish? Not... I don't... Did they I, want it to be honored in a memorial, and kind of doing, transporting them out might interfere with that? 
<sighs> the moment they break, the, my understanding of the power directive, if this is a pause, GM, this is a yeah. pause, because uh, we're out of character, yeah. um, making that clear, um, my understanding of the power directive is once they breach that barrier, they're now part of the galactic community, which that, means we can't render assistance. That is my understanding as well. Um, you, to, to, um, you know, if you directly interfere with their culture post pre warp, that's where some things start contradicting one another. But right. as soon as someone yeah. breaks warp, you are more than welcome to send them the Federation. You know, here's what we are and where we are, kind of spiel. Okay. Yeah. Um. Galen's plan. Uh, transport them over and have him uh, make himself look like one of their own. Alright. Okay. Um, so I am... So this is going to be a transporter task. Uh, this would be a control plus engineering with the ship assisting with, uh, I believe it is... Uh, sensors engineering? That's it. Sensors engineering. Okay, I'll, uh, uh, typically it would be a, what is your uh, typically it would be difficulty three. However, because the lunette has advanced sensors, it only becomes a difficulty two. Okay. Okay. Yamato, I, what is your uh, control score? I have eleven and uh, five uh, engineers. You have one point higher than what I could do. Okay. okay. So let's have Yamato roll that. Okay. I, I am going yeah, to spend I'll, uh, threat to increase the complication range to 18 to 20. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I'll, uh, I, let's see. Let me look through my talents just to see see if there's anything that adds die. I mean, do you well, have, have I have focus? Um, I don't, I have computers, warp core mechanics, research, starship recognition, Starship power systems and extravehicular operation. Nothing with transporters, though. No, no transporters. Dang. Yeah, talents I have unconventional thinking, computer expertise, testing a theory, and experimental device. Your option is we have four threat that can get you two extra dice. Yeah, we have four momentum, so... Or four, yeah, four momentum. yeah I'll, I'll spend uh, three of that for two dice. All right. Okay. Um, and Macaulay, you said like the wh- them wearing white, or is it actually like the, a painting marking they do on themselves for their cast it's, identification? Uh, clothing. clothing? Yeah. All right, yeah, I'm gonna be down there. I'm gonna be in the whitest robes they can ever imagine. Okay. I'm gonna look like the Pope. <laughs> oh my well, you god! Su- you succeed, but there will be a complication. Oh boy. Okay. <sighs> what? Oh, no. you, you could buy that complication. Oh, it's two days. It's two momentum, isn't it? We gained a momentum from it. Yeah, so we yeah, could I'll, buy that off. I'll, I'll, buy, I'll buy that off. Okay. Uh, so you, yeah. It, yeah, I'm down for that. Fair enough. Yeah, okay. does the ship have... Okay, the ship still needs to assist, right? That's yeah. uh, sensors does, engineering? Yeah, yeah, I can get the ship. Um, by my math, you should have one momentum left. Because you gained oh, one and then just spent two. Yeah, you had two. Yes, gained we one. Only had... No, we only had one. Ah, that we gained that. one. Okay. Oh, you get one back. So um, there's one more momentum from the ship. All right. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So transporter room. So. Ooh, it's big. Yes, it is. I made this a little bit larger than I probably should have. Oh well. Oh well. Okay, so we have first time seeing this one. So we have our good buddy Galen. And we have these two Ibani. They are Massive currently transporter room. I feel like... like Star Trek Online. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Ah, that's big. Oh god. Oh, wrong about it. <laughs> They're ginormous. <laughs> He's about it. Very gigantic. <laughs> what a character question. I yeah. feel like Crawford should probably be there. In any sort of consensus with that. Yeah. It is first contact. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Crawford will be there. Okay. That's is that is he actually a character? I haven't Is he actually a supporting character yet? Or oh no, Captain Crawford. 
I'm sorry. I, have <laughs> thinking, I was thinking another character with a C name. Okay, so the captain no. will be here. The guy in charge. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to try and maybe replicate some kind of diplomatic uniform in the light blue color that we found earlier. Uh, you don't have a lot of time. Okay, and then I'll just go. It's okay. fine. I won't waste time. That's fair. Okay, so lieutenants, uh, Lieutenant Galen and Captain Crawford are there as two Ibani astronauts still appear, uh, materialize. Um, they're actually in a deep um, hug at the moment. Probably just waiting for their time to go to sleep and die. But um, they are realizing that where are we? We're not going right. to die. And then they stand up very shakily. Uh, ver- uh, the, the male appears to be quite weak. So, um, as I said, I got a big white robe on. I'm having my arms raised up to try and, like, cover the view of the captain for a moment as I step up to the platform. I'm trying to do, like, a very yeah. symbolic thing for them. And I just reach down and put my hands on both their shoulders. Um... When I did their scan, though, were any of them? Did they, how was their life signs? Uh, they were very faint. Uh, they're very, they're basic. They're barely conscious at the moment. So you see them swaying, uh, radiation sick, uh, severe radiation sickness. Okay. Um, they just look up and one the the female the the one the silvery one the silvery token just mm-hmm. looks at the other and goes, see. I told you the saviors were real. And oh, no. he just... He responds by <laughs> yeah, basically he... throwing up on the uh, transporter pad. He, uh, when they said the saviors were real, he's just gonna, like... He just look back to the guy like, Oh, uh, come with me, please. They... Can you move? She... I... Yes. Uh... This is fun. They consider us gods. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I assume they. I assume they see me at this point. Oh, they they do. Yes. Um. The first, the male who's busy throwing up on the transporter pad isn't paying you much heed. The other one just sort of goes, "You are not of us, our species." Yeah. I am. Uh, I am I'm very sorry. tired. We will get you treated. Please come with me. I'm, I'm going to... Uh, however strong I need to be for the hollow emitters to help, like, hold them up and move them. Oh, just for the sake of funniness, um, I'll, or just for the sake of brevity, I'll say that both you and the captain managed to wrestle them to sickbay. Excellent. Uh, the, female t- the female makes it about five steps before she ends up in a similar retching mess as the uh, male... But eventually, they end up in sickbay. I let her use my robes as a cleaning cloth. Because <laughs> it's a hologram. Yes, it is. Okay, most of these folks aren't necessary here. Ambassador, what are you doing here? I am everywhere. <laughs> oh, you're Q. <laughs> as as uh, a good Klingon spy would be. <laughs> uh, yeah, just uh, clearing away the all uh, the... Uh, yeah. Unneeded tokens. Yeah, that's... You know, if I was a good GM, I would do this at the end of each session, but as people <laughs> watching the stream have probably figured out, I'm not a good GM. So, you you're, know... You're a good you're GM. Fine. Uh, you're a good you're GM. Fine. Okay. You're great. <laughs> you just want XP after all this, I know it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they are now both in a blear, mostly comatose state at the moment. Um, you don't need any uh, tools to know that the radiation sickness is profound, but at least it's not getting any worse. Yeah, I'll uh, start right away on uh, standard radiation treatment. Um, I'll take into account their physiology from what I learned from my scan as well. Okay. Uh, insight, or this will be control medicine uh, difficulty of one. Um, and I'm guessing I have multiple focuses that I can apply? I would suspect so, yes. E. I am built for this! <laughs> yep, you have two more, two more momentum is gained. Huzzah! 
Um, yeah, since they're past that, I'm going to revert back to normal human Galen. And then uh, just do a single duplicate. Okay. The Prime Galen will have a white lab coat, where the other one will just have the standard Odyssey uniform. Mm -hmm. Just for anyone to know the difference. Yep, marked as a blue dot on roll 20. <laughs> okay. So, um, everything goes fairly smoothly. I mean, this is standard radiation treatment that they teach any med student about to embark on a war on a warp on their first warp travel it's just it was surprising how quickly it built up in their species perhaps they're a little more susceptible to radiation than others but nothing too terrible um, they are currently unconscious uh, so half hour later their radiation is expunged and you have with some cellular regeneration techniques they are almost as good as new Excellent. Captain, have you been enjoying the show? It's been interesting to watch. Um, is there any lasting damage? Are we able to repair everything? Physiology, it should be fine. Psychology, though, there might be something. I am worried about what they said when they saw us, but it could have been simple delirium from their near-death experience. They could have seen us as angels coming on down to lift them up to their version of heaven. I recommend we take it easy and slowly with waking them up. Uh, I'm in agreement with that. Um, whenever you're ready, Doctor. I have let Chief Ember know to have security guards posted outside, just in case. I think that's a safe safe thing to do. All right. And uh, I'll wake up the female first since she seemed to be more receptive. Okay. Uh, the female wakes up groggily. Um, she shields her. She blinks several times as her uh, large pupils di um, contract in the light. And she will sit up and look at both... Uh, now, are you still in your human form, or are you back in their form? I, I would have switched back to human. Okay. Uh, she says, and immediately will scamp, will move behind the bed, trying to use it as a fort. Who are you? Where where, where am I? How did I get here? What? Hello. Hey. I kind of, you know, just hold up both hands. Um. Yeah. Lunette. Name is Niles Crawford, ending officer of this vessel. It's Dr. Uh, Galen. And he'll kind of motion over to him. I helped you recover from your accident. Uh, out of character, are there still two of him walking around? He hasn't said that the other one's oh, yeah. vanished yet, so... Yeah. Okay. She s sort of stands up very shakily. And says, I am Nyla of the uh, Kosovo, of the Kosovo Empire. Tell me, did you save us from the Borg? Or are you someone different? Save us from Borg. Okay, that's interesting. Um, because I must, I must well, know. We were planning to come here because we Borg signal what on what I'm assuming is your planet's moon, and. We also came here because we saw you're about to capable ship and I wanted to be the first to well welcome you to a world than you probably know okay uh, obviously this is a lot to take in and she immediately just sort of slumps down at the corner okay Captain. Uh, okay. So, 
I'm not going to die. What about him? He'll also be fine. We're in the process of waking him up. Good. I Good. figured he would respond better if he saw a familiar face instead of different entities. Uh, Cassis, or Cavus has always been a little more difficult to change. But yes, yes. Good. Okay. So, you're not going to perform sinister experiments on us like the old, like the TVs, or like the um, vid screens always say? Um, before any response happens, I'm going to look at Galen like, don't make any jokes right now. Galen actually has a very sad and horrified look when she says that. He's like, no, it's not within my ability to do that. I am a healer, and everyone that's part of the ship has no intention of ever doing that. She lets out a As... brief sigh of relief. Oh. Um, we've come here because, obviously, we want to make some kind of ethnic relations. Um, can you tell us more about this Borg signal that's coming from your moon? I don't know anything about that technology. I'm sorry. I, I've just been in. I've been in training to fly this mission for the last three years of my life. Oh, obviously, this is a lot to take in. Um, honestly, as you can tell, I'm not. Is no. Uh, BC is known as a human. Dr. Galen, well, and himself, if he wants, uh, he probably knows himself better than I do. I am what you call a hologram, a hard light construct. A simple demonstration. And he, a, a, a second, or a, yeah, another Galen will step out of him. Uh, she shrieks a little bit and then realizes that you're not actually going to hurt her and then sort of recomposes herself. I am a computer program. Okay. Okay. This is fine. Just please, I need to see if Cavus is okay. Very well. Let's wake him up. And uh, again, we'll put a hand on his chest and then you know, I mean, this is a hypospray, and just pat his chest slowly just to help him wake up. Cavus wakes up with a start, um, as if some someone breathing, uh, ah, taking a sharp intake of breath, and he sits up, takes a quick look around, panicked, uh, sees Nyla, or Naya. Nia Nyla, I forget. I typed it said right Nyla, Nyla, originally. Thank you. I had her notes as Naya, so now she's Nyla. Okay sees Nyla and immediately jumps up, goes over and gives her a warm embrace. Yes. She says, you're safe. They're not going to do anything to us. They're... I think they're friendly? He goes, okay, if, if that's what you say, so dear. Tell. He looks up. Okay. I don't know a lot, and I, quite frankly, this is way above my pay grade. How's my ship? Or our ship. The ship. It's, it's, I'm sorry. We can, we can safely assume it blew up, right? Um, it's just still leaking radiation by the bucket load, but it hasn't blown up yet. I mean, it's okay. looking at like a warp core breach is imminent. It's a small warp right. core, so it's not going to be a big problem. Um, It's still there, uh, but it looks like most likely imminent. Uh, he makes a uh, sort of a triangle gesture from his uh, between his uh, pectorals and his groin, what you believe might be a sort of a mourning gesture. Mm -hmm. As it's quickly mirrored by Nyla. <sighs> well, it got us uh, it got us to where we needed to go. I hope the next generation is a little bit more stable. Captain, I am Cavus, and I am from the Celestine or the Cil ah, the Silatine Alliance. Thank you for saving us. 
What now? Well, give you some basic information about the organization that part of. It's a organization of many different planets that we call the United Federation. Basic information to help expand universe and if you'll trade some information with us as well we about your people as well uh, so you are not beings of divine wrath and rapture as some of the more fanatical people on my planet might say they're quite the opposite really he sort of shoots Nyla, Nyla a playful told you so look Fine. There's a lot to take in, Captain. Can we go home? He can take you home very easily. Splendid. Okay. Uh, Galen's going to go to a computer console and just take a look at a scan of their ship. Okay. Um, as uh, Yamato would easily tell you on the bridge, it is roughly two or three minutes away from a warp core breach. Um, the projected magnitude doesn't look too severe, but yeah. uh, he'll just he'll just like quickly transfer up to the bridge. Uh, he'll step to a side alcove and disappear without freaking them out. Uh, as his other duplicates will just stand there about. Okay. <laughs> and he'll just go to the bridge and uh, materialize right next to Yamato. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, Yamato's on the bridge, and Galen just shows up. Hello. I don't do that. That is a very <laughs> adverse reaction to this. I've never encountered one of that magnitude. But we only have a few minutes. <laughs> Sneaking up on me like that. Oh, jeez. And she flutters a hand over her heart. Yeah, you know the standard, almost had a heart attack kind of thing. As our chief engineer, are you able to contain the breach or actually stop it? I believe, for a culture that has just achieved warp speed, it would be a significant uh, gesture if we were able to return the vessel to them. I can certainly try. Excellent. I am not as diverse into the warp count uh, ranks of engineering, although I do have a strong field in holographics. I figured I could maybe assist a little bit with my processing power. I'm uh, all right. Okay, so uh, this would be engineering, I'm assuming. Uh, yes. So run me through what you're looking to do. Okay, it's probably going to be some sort of remote process. Um, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what I'm. Okay, so uh, you're trying. You want to hack their systems and shut down systems? Is that my understanding? Uh, I think the goal is to stop the warp core from breaching. Mm -hmm. If that's the simplest way to do it. Yeah. Okay. That would be... Let's do a... Uh, because time is of the essence, let's run a Daring plus Engineering. Uh, difficulty okay. will be a 3. Um, and can I assist? Because I got an Engineering of 4. Sure, go for it. So okay, nine. Daring and daring Engineering difficulty 3. Would the ship be assisting too? Uh, no, if Galen's assisting, then the ship is not. Okay. So... Uh, Daring engineering. Um, I'll spend three momentum to get two. Uh, to get two. Okay, you're taking all of it. Cool. Okay. And for me, is it daring engineering as well? Yes, please. And computers for compu uh, com Would computers or warp core mechanics work? Either would work. Yes. Okay. Okay. Daring is nine. So this is going to be a little trickier, but can still do it. Mm -hmm. He 
here we go. Hey. Okay, you made it. That would be three yeah. successes and one from Galen. So that is one momentum back. All right. You immediately, uh, you figure out precise, precisely what cables need to be, uh, or uh, you figured out precisely how to manipulate the warp core into uh, performing a, uh, not really a safe shutdown per se, but it's no longer going to explode. Uh, the antimatter is ejected, or uh, where it will impact something matter fairly quickly and detonate a safe distance away. So you okay. saved the ship. Yep. And oh, the chief? after, you're welcome. Now, please, don't sneak up on me like that next time. No promises, and I'll disappear. We appear on our other side. <laughs> no, I'll go back to sick baby. Oh, oh, <laughs> and she fell, and she held the head to her heart again. Oh, I'm telling you, that's the. The one negative point about holograms—they always sneak up on you like a, like a, like a fucking like ninja. Uh, you get used to it. Master Chief Ember says, "No, you don't." Damned holograms. And Mud just goes, "You get used to it. It's fine." Captain. Doctor. I have wonderful news for our guests. And please present them with it. Your ship has been saved, and it will need some repair, but I believe you can put it in a museum somewhere. They immediately give you... They immediately uh, hug each other, and they will quickly do some sort of gesture, which you assume is a equivalent of a high five. It's sort of like a raised fist bump of sorts. Mm. Doctor, um, Captain, you have our thanks. For everything. It was our pleasure. Mm-hmm. Okay. I do recommend some more rest uh, while the treatment has been performed. You are still fatigued, and uh, I want you to get a little more rest, and I will figure out what food you can eat. That would be appreciated, Doctor. There are probably some nutrition supplements left on our shuttle which are left on our ship if you could get to them somehow we will examine them due to the radiation though I don't want to feed you something that may have been highly irradiated yeah, yeah that I don't want to do that again <laughs> um, and on that note we will do a scene change uh, okay so uh, let's pull the group right now we are nearing 10 o'clock I was hoping that A plot, B plot would go faster. I was completely wrong on this aspect. I suspect <laughs> we have about maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half left. Um, so I know that many of you are far more east than I am. Um, so <laughs> I am perfect. We're, we're at a good place right now where we can put a pin in this and come back next session. I can come up with other ways to extend that session to make that more interesting, I hope. Um... That's something that's fine by me, because for me, it's almost one in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, I'm approaching that wall. Okay, so then let's put a pin in this. Um, everyone watching us on stream, thank you so very much. Um, I Just a reminder that we will not be having a session on the 28th, and we will have to pick up this episode on uh, July the 12th. So, um, goodbye stream. I will... See you guys later, and for players, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!